stop playing up there. Yeah, he's yes, sir. Asante? Yes. All right. Uh, Latrell? Yep. You said dang dang? Dang dang. Yep. Good All right. Ball. Cool. Yep, that's it. Appreciate Good you. Day, no problem. Good luck tonight. Yeah. We starting right at 45, right? Gotcha.
All right, here we go. The following is a presentation of Learfield IMG College. It's time for St. Mary's Basketball on the Gales Radio Network. Inside to the corner for Dukas, his three, got it! Johnson blocks the shot! LJ is everywhere right now. Bowen's open, lets a three fly, it's good! Big shot for Kyle Bowen! Welcome to the University Credit Union pregame show. University Credit Union, the official credit union of St. Mary's College Athletics. Visit ucu.org to learn more. Live courtside. Here's Alex Jensen. On a Tuesday night in Moraga, University Credit Union Pavilion, it's time for St. Mary's basketball as the Gales take a quick break from West Coast Conference play and host Division II Academy of Art out of San Francisco right before the rains come tomorrow. Welcome to Gales basketball, ladies and gentlemen. Alex Jensen with you on this Tuesday night in Moraga, getting ready for St. Mary's in the Academy of Art. The Gales looking for their fourth consecutive win had to pick up a big time road win. Their first road game of the season, a 67-64 victory over our tribal Santa Clara on Saturday on New Year's Eve. And St. Mary's in the process, winning their third consecutive game and uh, improving to 12 and four overall and two and zero in West Coast Conference play. And really a big one for St. Mary's to get. If you look at the grand schemes, scheme of things, uh, for the Gales, you start to put the pieces together down the stretch. Of course, it's still very early, but you know Santa Clara, you know, likely it will be a top four team in the WCC, at least top five, to win those type of games on the road, put you in a good position, at least early on, still plenty of business to take care of. Gales 12 and four again coming into play today, and uh, a game that was added to the schedule about a month ago against the Academy of Art Urban Knights. The uh, Urban Knights went to the Division II NCAA tournament for the first time a year ago. They, as the fourth seed in the PacWest tournament, the Urban Knights uh, went through Fresno Pacific, Point Loma, and last team is escape Azusa Pacific. Pardon me in the uh, PacWest championship game, lost to Chico State in the first round of the uh, Division II tournament. It's a team that knocked off a Division One school last year when they beat UC Davis in Davis, 79 to 60, it was not close. They beat Davis 79 to 60 on November 8th of 2021. You're not careful in these games and uh, that can be the faith. The Gales trailed, remember, Stanislaus State in this building a year ago at halftime. So for St. Mary's, you know, the recipe is going to be get out to a good lead early, let your young guys come in and get some experience. But again, you've got to take care of business on the front end as uh, the Gales gun for their fourth consecutive win. St. Mary's has elevated themselves as 17th in the Ken Palm rankings and 13th in the net. And of course, the Gales will be off on Thursday in West Coast Conference play before returning to action and hosting Portland here on Saturday. First things first, a matchup with the Academy of Art. Remember for St. Mary's, uh, only 12 guys, or uh, 10 guys rather, suiting up in every game this season. So there should be plenty of opportunities going around uh, for Gales to get playing time tonight against the Urban Knights. As we continue along with our pregame show, Mickey McConnell joins us for our pregame coaches show. That'll be followed by starting lineups and the opening tip from University Credit Union Pavilion on this Tuesday night. You're listening to Gales Basketball, our pregame show from Learfield. Back with more after this. Show your school spirit and earn rewards as the official credit union of St. Mary's College, University Credit Union offers a custom-designed rewards credit card for the Gale family. Enjoy no annual fee while earning unlimited points, making the UCU St. Mary's credit card the perfect card to use for everyday use. Plus, when you open a UCU checking account, you'll show even more Gale pride with the St. Mary's College debit card. Visit ucu.org to learn more and apply today. Federally insured by NCUA. Walnut Creek offers Gales fans quick and easy access to the excitement of a vibrant city and the charm of hometown California, all in one central location. Only seven miles from campus, Walnut Creek Hotels are the official lodging partners for St. Mary's. In a sunny, upscale and comfortable environment at the base of Mount Diablo, Walnut Creek brings together an eclectic collection of culture, award-winning shopping, hotels, sports facilities, and cuisine to make you smile at every turn. Go to visitwalnutcreek.org to explore your next adventure. 
Hey, Gales fans. If you love attending live sporting events and concerts, then be sure to check out Tickets for Less. At ticketsforless.com, you'll find the best selection of tickets to all your favorite events, and you never pay steep per-ticket service fees like you do on other sites. Whether you're looking to see your gals or are planning a trip to see a big event in the city, ticketsforless.com should always be your first stop for tickets. Ticketsforless.com, proud partner of St. Mary's Athletics and live event goers everywhere. This is St. Mary's Basketball on the Gales Radio Network. With tip-off just minutes away, time to get the pregame thoughts of associate head coach Mickey McConnell. With coach, here's Alex Jensen. Continuing to get you ready for basketball on this Tuesday night as the Gales take a quick trip out of West Coast Conference play to take on the Urban Knights of Academy of Art. Joined by Mickey McConnell for our pregame coaches show. And, uh, boy, Mick, I mean, I don't think you could ask much more of your team. Maybe a little lulled down the stretch there against Santa Clara. But first two games in West Coast Conference play, two wins. But most importantly, it just seems like the last five, six, especially three games, it seems like you guys are, are in a good place. Yeah, I think we've continued to get better. I think that's kind of what we've talked about all season is just our, our guys need to get a little bit better every week and our young guys continue to do that and even our, our veteran guys you know Bowen's made a jump um, Dukas Logan if those guys can make a little jump it, it makes a huge difference so I thought we've, we've done that um, over the past couple of weeks and we really did it against Santa Clara apart from the first 10 minutes I thought we struggled offensively but once we kind of got in our, a rhythm we we started to get easy buckets and um, we got great shots so Really, really happy with how we played. Would have liked to close it a little better. Got a little little too close for uh, our liking. But um, overall, I thought we played pretty well. Yeah, I'll say. And even when the game got close, I mean, 17 points from the free throw line for Santa Clara in the second half, 18 from the field. You know, for a young team, maybe some coaches are nervous taking their club on the road for the first time. But how much does, you know, your, your team's defensive ability really give you a level of comfort in a situation they may not have been before? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it carried us early. I mean, we were we were stuck. I think it was 16-10, and we got a lot of stops. But it it is. It helps you It helps you in, in all these games where, you know, on the road it's a little different environment, um, different ball, different gym, crowd, whatever it is. And, and I thought our guys handled it well. And like you said, a lot of it comes from just our, our stability of our defense, and it's got to be our identity. And it, it can help weather the storm a little bit. Obviously, you don't want to get off to poor starts, but – Occasionally it can happen on the road and you need your defense to, to be really uh, stingy on, on D to limit their points. So we did a good job of that. I think we kept us sell our, ourselves in the game and got it to a one-point game at half, and I don't think we played great in that first half. Yeah, the leader of that was was Logan, right? And, and Kyle Bowen obviously had a big role in that as well, as did Alex Duke. It's the nice job on, on Keyshawn Justice. And really, you can go down the whole team, Aiden Mahaney on Carlos Stewart. But for LJ, you know, two for 13, of course, not the offensive outing he would like, but even still, he finds a way to contribute. Five assists, no turnovers, did the job on Pajemski. You know, I mean, his attitude, his, um, his makeup, if you will, how, how does that trickle down to the rest of the club? Yeah, I mean, that's he, he loves to compete. He loves the challenge um, of trying to wipe out the other team's best guard. And, you know, it's he gets that task every night. So it's a it's a it's a tough one. But he's always he's always up for it. And I thought, yeah, in that first half, he just makes it tough on on uh, guys to get with the ball where they want. And he's uh, he's athletic and it, he can kind of disrupt um, their offensive flow a little bit. So. It definitely the tone set with him. Obviously, Bowen. I thought Saxon did a really nice job in the pick and roll, and then Aiden. Aiden did a nice job um, on Stewart, and then, like we were talking before, I, I mean, Dukas was holding Justice to zero for quite a bit of that game, and um, until he got going a little bit late. But you know, it's a it's a collective effort. Our guys are really bought into our defensive principles and playing together, and they're they're really they're confident in their ability there, and they're they're. Uh, you know, they trust each other a lot. And I think a lot of it, obviously, they've played a lot, but it's just the type of guys they are. They, they really have bought into defensive end. And they've become a very good rebounding team as well. What about this unit? And we talked about this, but, you know, what about this unit makes it a good unit in that regard? I mean, especially, you know, Kyle Bowen and Mitchell Saxon are both averaging nearly KB, nearly eight rebounds a game. But it's a, it's a club effort there, right? What about this unit makes them good on the boards? Um, 
A lot of it's habits uh, on the defensive end. Offensively, though, it just, you know, Saxon's a really good offensive rebounder. Bowen is, Harry Wessels is, Dukas um, is as well. And then Luke Barrett, you just have the personnel to crash the O boards is um, probably a little bit ab above what it was last year. And then I think on the defensive boards, uh, we have a little bit more size and physicality. Obviously, um, you returned Saxon, but you brought in, in Wessels, and Bowen's been made a huge jump there. I mean, he's got 15 boards last game. I don't, not many, not many people do that. So, I think it's just a collective identity, and, and some of it's just their the mindset of um, these guys are tough, the grittiness, all that stuff that we've talked about throughout the past couple of years is is what these guys are, and they've really they've really um, shown it this year. You know, scheduling this game when you did makes a lot of sense. You've got a whole week off, but, but you know, at least in terms of WCC play. But tell me about the thought process that goes into scheduling a Division II team and what you want to get out of it. Yeah, I mean, we had, a, we had a bye week on Thursday, so it was a perfect spot to put a game in, and there's not too many other teams in the country that need a game at this point or want to fit one in. So um, for us, it's just another, another opportunity. It's a good experience for our young guys they get another game under their belt um and it's just another chance for our guys to compete and if you know we know our guys like we do you know they're they're always up for the challenge they know whoever they're playing against whenever it is they're excited to play and that's kind of what we've been and what we need to be so it's just you know any any extra game you can get i always think is is beneficial you get to see a different defense um they play a different style than we're used to we don't get to play them that often so um, it'll be a, it'll be a challenge for us, um, but I think our guys will be ready. They've been a pretty good club, uh, you know, in their conference. Obviously, won the conference tournament championship last year. Uh, went to their first NCAA tournament. They're nine and four. They returned their top four scores. Not a bad Division two team here, the Urban Knights. No, they're good. They're they have good talent. Um, they're really quick. Um, they have good guards. They they play pretty free flowing, so it's uh, they can put points on the board. They're good in transition, um, so we'll have to be really locked in defensively to you know limiting that. And um, they've had success, so you know we talked about it early in the year when we brought the Oral Roberts, Vermonts, and when you play teams and programs that have had success, there's a different feel about them. They know how to win. They've been in these situations. They're they're not going to be scared of the challenge. So we'll have our our hands full tonight, and um, our guys will be ready to go. All right, let's get now to our keys to the game. They're brought to you, as always, by Bay Alarm. With a range of home and business security options, Bay Alarm can protect it all with just one call. Quick Tuesday night uh, at a conference game, St. Mary's Academy of Art, back at it in the West Coast Conference on Saturday. But, Mick, uh, the floor is yours for tonight's keys to the game against the Urban Knights. Yeah, number one at home is take care of the ball. I think they force something like 17 turnovers a game or something like that. So we'll have to do a good job there. Just take care of it. I think we can get great shots on them. Um, keep them out of transition, make it make it a half court game. So take care of it, keep them out of transition, make them play in the half court against our set defense and then continue on the track that we were on the offensive boards, smash the offensive boards. We should have the size advantage um, and we have to we have to do that tonight. Just we should really try to put the ball inside a lot, smash them on the O boards and win the rebound battle. Um, and if we can do those things, I think we'll be in, in good shape. 58 offensive rebounds over your last four games. I'm going to keep repeating that number until something changes. Mick, appreciate the time. Uh, best of luck tonight. We'll talk to you after the ball game. Sounds good. Thanks. All right, that's Mickey McConnell with your pregame coaches show. Starting lineups and the opening tip on this Tuesday night from Moraga are coming up next, and you're listening to Gales Basketball from Learfield. Bay Alarm is proud to sponsor the St. Mary's Gales. How good is your defense? When it comes to protecting your home or business, Bay Alarm has been bringing the best for over 75 years. With security camera and fire alarm systems designed to fit your specific needs, expertly installed and professionally monitored 24-7. Ready to up your security game? Go to BayAlarm.com and let our team of security experts get you protected today. Go Gales! Out here, we charge into the heartland with Mountain Dew. Out here, there's no rush hour, just the rush of flying wide open on glassy water at 5 a.m. with your first dew in hand. And there's no spin class, just bright green spinner bait that ironically matches your second dew. Out here, we don't just play big buck hunt, we hunt actual big bucks. And out here, the best road is off-road, and the color of your truck is mud. Out here, it's dew. 
Since 1990, the team at Common Interest Management has been privileged to serve boards of directors and community homeowners of many of the Bay Area's most prestigious communities. Whether working with a newly established community in the earliest stages of development or a more mature community, our experienced managers consult with the board to share best practices in all areas of community management. Common Interest tailors its services for communities of all sizes. If you are currently evaluating a new management company, please visit us at commoninterest.com. You're listening to St. Mary's Basketball on the Gales Radio Network. It's time for St. Mary's Basketball. Rises up, floats it up, and in, and one. Gets in the paint right to the rim. Oh, man, he throws it down. Gales Basketball is brought to you by Pepsi. Delicious, refreshing Pepsi by Under Armour. We'll keep building the gear, you'll keep getting better. And by Diablo Valley Insurance, owned and run by Gales. Go to DiabloValleyInsurance.com today to request a quote. James at home with the right hand! Oh my! This place has been electric tonight. It's time for tip-off. Back courtside, here's Alex Jensen. Ready for basketball from Moraga on this Tuesday night. St. Mary's uh, brief detour out of the out of our West Coast Conference play, taking on Division II Academy of Art out of the Pac West Conference. The uh, Urban Knights following this game, they'll be off to the Hawaiian Islands. A little three-game set against the Hawaii Pacific Sharks, the Chaminade Silver Swords, and the UH Hilo Vulcans. That's part of that Pac West Conference, which also includes Dominican. And uh, Point Loma, Azusa Pacific, Fresno Pacific, among others. And again, Academy of Art. They went to their first ever NCAA tournament a year ago after winning the uh, conference tournament as a four seed and defeating number one seed Point Loma, who right now is in the top 25 in Division Two, in, uh, in one of the two major polls in the semifinals before defeating Azusa Pacific in the final. For the Gales, they're looking for their fourth consecutive win. They've won six out of seven including a a big-time win at Santa Clara in their first road game of the year on New Year's Eve. A very happy New Year to you. Glad you're with us. And let's take a break now for the Gale intro video. Time now for the starting lineups for tonight. They're brought to you by University Credit Union, the official credit union of St. Mary's College. Visit ucu.org to join today. First for the Urban Knights, 9-4 overall, 4-3 and three 
in the Pac West. The Academy of Art is coming off a two point victory over uh, Fresno Pacific last night in the Central Valley down in Fresno. The Urban Knights, in fact, have won three in a row, all in Pac West play at home against Biola, then at Holy Names and at Fresno Pacific. Urban Knights are under fourth year head coach Scott Waterman, 44 and 44 overall. And the Urban Knights, they built upon going to the tournament last year with their first ever 4-0 start this season. And they do have a win over a top 25 team this year in Division II, number 19, St. Martins. Uh, last month, 78-73 in Lacey, Washington. That's in the uh, Spokane, the greater Spokane area. Again, a program that owns a Division I win in the last two seasons, beating UC Davis 79-60 on November 28th of last season. For the Urban Knights, Rodney Munson, 6'2", sophomore, starts in the backcourt. He's joined by Clay Brown, this team's leading scorer, leading assist man, 6'4", 195, a senior out of South Jamaica, Queens. Started his career at St. Peter's, Clay Brown did, before uh, heading to St. Thomas Aquinas College and then over to the city, to Academy of Art University. Dang Dang, 6'4", a grad transfer out of Madison, Wisconsin. He began his career at Eastern Illinois. He starts at, uh, at a wing with Latrell Williams, 6'5", 227, a junior out of Gary, Indiana, and Micah Sante, who did not play last night. He's the man in the middle for the Urban Knights, 6'7", 228, a senior out of Toronto. Again, Art U, as they are known, is 9-4, uh, 4-3 and, four, four and three in the Pac West, 4-3 and three on the road, coming off their first ever 20-win season a year ago, 20-12, and 13-7 in the Pac West, again, a fourth place finish. Now for the Gales at 12 and four, they're looking for their fourth consecutive win. And Randy Bennett, eight wins away from 500. And for the eighth consecutive game, Aiden Mahaney, Logan Johnson in the backcourt, Alex Dukas, Kyle Bowen at the wings, and Mitchell Saxon in the middle for St. Mary's. As uh, Coben Lopez, he's gonna take Dang Dang over to the bench and maybe a little bit of a uniform adjustment here as Dang Dang it looks like he's going to get patched up. 11th home game for St. Mary's. They're 8-2 and two this season at home. The students are back in session. They're right behind me here at University Credit Union Pavilion. A Jan term is underway here at St. Mary's. All right, we are ready for basketball on this Tuesday. The Gales and the Urban Knights. First ever meeting between these two programs and the tip controlled by Art U, and they will be attacking the basket to my left as Munson controls the dribble. This is Brown on the near side. Up top it comes to Asante. He'll cycle it right side to Munson. Alex Jensen with you on this Tuesday. Glad to have you with us. The final uh, Tuesday game for the Gales until, well, you would hope March. The West Coast Conference Championship game would fall on a Tuesday. Right side, Munson jab step on Mahaney, steps back, fires away, hits a three. And Art U is on the board first. Urban Knights, they are shooting nearly 37% from deep. Well, Mahaney into the front court for the Gales in the white. Red numbers and navy blue trim. Dukas bounced past the post for Saxon. Knocked away momentarily by Latrell Williams. Picked up by Johnson. 10 to shoot. LJ with the right hand along the baseline. Leaves his feet. Throws it out to the wing for Mahaney. It's off his foot. Four to shoot. Here's KB, and he's got to call a timeout. Boy, with one on the shot clock or two on the shot clock, the... Shot clock never stopped. KB had to take a timeout. Not a good first possession for the Gales. And got to credit Art U. They had some uh, active defense there. So they will take a look at the clock and make sure that they put the right amount here. And Coben Lopez, his officiating crew. Johnny Harrington, Ryan McCarty will take a look. I'm not sure if KB maybe got poked in the eye there. It looked like he was kind of slow to get his wits about him. And in fact, he is getting some attention over there from St. Mary's trainer, Josh Sims. Gales, they have had you know, the two losses here at home. And New Mexico, they are still undefeated, and they're number 21 in the country now. That was a four-point loss, but really the one against Colorado State is the one that sticks out as a game where maybe the Gales could have had a better effort, especially down the stretch. Normally when the Gales hold on to the basketball, they've been very good. Less than 14 turnovers. St. Mary's is 11-0 this year. So they put one on the shot clock, exactly one minute into the ball game. St. Mary's trails 3-0 on a three by Rodney Munson. 
Dukas will trigger as uh, Bowen, he may still be bleeding here. And it's from the bridge of his nose, so Coleman Lopez is going to say you got to get somebody else in. That'll get Joshua Jefferson off the bench early in this one. And Kyle Bowen will get patched up by Josh Sims to uh, prevent any further blood coming from his nose. So one to shoot for St. Mary's. They've taken their use it or lose it timeout. Dukas to trigger. Gets it into Johnson. Johnson's got a hoist. He does. This will count if it goes. And it's good. Johnson hits it. They're going to look at it, but that looked like it left LJ's hand before the shot clock gets fired. Just above the hash mark, about 30 feet away for Johnson. And Coben Lopez and company, they will look at this. But Johnson, I mean, he has struggled shooting the three ball this year. Just 25% from outside the arc. Oh boy, that was, didn't need a whole lot of rim to drop through. And again, they're going to look at this, make sure it got out of his hands. In real time, it sure looked like LJ let that one fly in time. And if he did, this game will be tied at three. A couple stoppages already in the early going. Now they counted it on the floor, so that will be Imperative, now they're calling the, the other official over there, Coben Lopez, the lead official tonight. They will need irrefutable evidence to overturn it. So now they will get together. Remember, they called it good on the floor, and they will count it. Three for Logan Johnson. We are tied at three. So Mahaney, Johnson, Dukas, Jefferson, and Saxon. Kyle Bowen is back on the bench for St. Mary's. And Munson will jog it ahead for Academy of Art in the black. Red numerals and white trim. Asante palms the ball on Jefferson. Hand off to Brown. Back to Asante. Left wing three over Johnson. That's up and good. So Academy of Art, the Urban Knights, two of two from the field. They both come from deep. Here's Johnson, pick and roll with Saxon. Instead throws it out to the corner for Jefferson. Dribble drive, jump stop, kick out Dukas. Shot fake, dribbles into a mid-range, rolls around and drops through. So Dukas is on the board, 11 points against Santa Clara the other night. The Urban Knights, they make nearly eight threes a game. They've got two so far here. Williams out top, chased off the line. We'll take a drive inside, lays it up and in over Jefferson. Academy of Art is three for three. Two minutes in, they have a one point lead. Mahaney calling out a play as he breaks the timeline. 6-5, Urban Knights. Dukas out top, high arcing three on the way. Off the front rim, no good. Good box out there by Williams. Tap the rebound to Asante. And now Dang Dang will push ahead for the Urban Knights. 6-5, Art U. Asante gets around Saxon. Lost the basketball foul called on Mitchell. With 17-25 to play, Asante will have two shots. So the Urban Knights, they're three of three. They're two of two from deep. And Asante will go to the line for two shots here. The 6'7 Canadian, native of Ontario, or uh, Toronto, Ontario, pardon me. Preseason all Pac West, first free throw on the way and good. He was the Pac West tournament MVP last year as Bowen returns for Joshua Jefferson. Again, the Urban Knights. Making their way, winning the title as the four seed before falling to Chico State in the first round of the uh, tournament. Chico State was the 15 overall seed, 78-61. They've doubled up the Gales early here, 10 to five. And they have yet to miss. Three of three from the field, two of two from the charity strike. Trying to get it downstairs to Saxon. Williams is fronting the post. Saxon has it now. Left baseline, double teamed. Dukas with six to shoot, lost it. Knocked out of bounds by the Urban Knights. And it'll stay with St. Mary's. Okay, 
Johnson will trigger from the far corner. Three minutes in, 10-5, Academy of Art. Dukas out top, four to shoot. Dukas steps back, three on the way. It's good. High arcing step back for Alex Dukas. That's his second bucket, the Gales' second three. It's 10-8, Art U. Asante. Rodney Munson, 6'2". Eight points a game. Native of New Orleans. Latrell Williams, 6'5". Saxon has a big time size advantage on him. Asante open, free throw line jumper is good. Couple breakdowns for the Gales early here, and Randy Bennett up from the bench and uh, talking to his club while action is going on. Four for four from the field is Art U. They have a 12-8 lead. Saxon outside to LJ, wide open, straight away, three is good. That's the Gales' third triple, it's Johnson's second. We'll see if the Gale defense comes to play. Brown hits a back cutter in and out of the hands of Munson. Saves it into Asante. Urban Knights with a one-point lead. Asante, that's deep from the right side. He knocks it down. Wow. Boy, Asante is feeling it early. He's got 10 points. He's three of three from the field. 15-11. Art U is on top. In a game like this, of course, you know, the Urban Knights have nothing to lose. Mahaney touch pass to Dukas, corner three this time. He's got three of them. So Dukas answers, he has eight. Not even five minutes in, it's a 15-14. Art, you lead. Here's Brown, he steps back, he's open, lets a three fly. Urban Knights finally miss one. Bowen with the rebound, sends Dukas on his way. Here's Alex in the open floor, had his dribble knocked away. And now the Urban Knights the steal and a run out and an overthrow as Brown can't handle the pass. Gales come away with the steal. Here for Mickey McConnell on our pregame show, the Gales want to get this game in the half court. Pound it downstairs just like that as Mitchell Saxon scores low left. First bucket for Saxon. 16-15, the Gales are on top. This is their first lead of the ball game. Just over five minutes in, Asante, a heat check three. That's an air ball, good contest there by Bowen. And that takes us to a timeout on the floor here in Moraga. Well, the Urban Knights cooling off just a little bit. They made their first five. They missed their last two. They're five of seven from the field. On the other side for the Gales, they're six of seven from the field. Dukas and... Leads the way with eight points. St. Mary's 16, Academy of Art 15 will step aside. You're listening to Gales Basketball from Learfield. Panini's Ristorante has been delivering quality food and beverages to the Moraga area for years and is a proud hometown partner of St. Mary's College Athletics. Casual dining with the whole family or an adult night out, they have you covered. Visit them at 1375 Moraga Way for a wonderful experience. Panini's Restaurante. Diablo Valley Insurance Agency is a full-service independent insurance brokerage located in Walnut Creek. Founded in 1956, our agency has been providing insurance services to clients throughout Northern California and the Western United States for over 50 years. Our team of insurance professionals will take the time to understand your needs, whether personal or related to your business, and provide the best products and services for you. Go to DiabloValleyInsurance.com today to request a quote. Diablo Valley Insurance Agency. Local. Independent. Trusted. Show your school spirit and earn rewards. As the official credit union of St. Mary's College, University Credit Union offers a custom-designed rewards credit card for the Gale family. Enjoy no annual fee while earning unlimited points, making the UCU St. Mary's credit card the perfect card to use for everyday use. Plus, when you open a UCU checking account, you'll show even more Gale pride with the St. Mary's College debit card. Visit ucu.org to learn more and apply today. Federally insured by NCUA. This is Alex Dugas, and you're listening to the Gales Basketball. St. Mary's 16, Art U 15. Gales will have the basketball backcourt pressure from the Urban Knights. Welcome back to Moraga. I'm Alex Jensen. Glad to have you with us on this Tuesday. St. Mary's struggled to get stops early. The Urban Knights made their first five shots, but the Gales have gotten stops 
Last two times down the floor. Mahaney open, dribbles into a three. It's on the way off the front rim, no good. And the rebound cleared by RDU. They will push ahead. This is Brown all the way coast to coast, has it stripped, and Bowen collects the loose ball. Leaves his feet and sends Mahaney on his way. That's knocked away by Munson. A run out for the Urban Knights and getting a lay in transition is Dang Dang. Second Gale turnover. That time Bowen left his feet, didn't have anywhere to go with it. Urban Knights are back on top. 17-16, Marshallonis waits the scores table for the Gales. St. Mary's been outscored in the paint so far, six to two. Here's Saxon, he's being defended by the 6'5", Latrell Williams. Bowen from the left wing, that's an air ball. Out of bounds it will go, no, it was last touch by the Urban Knights. Six to shoot, Marshall Lonis will check in. And Mahaney will come off. And Augustus will trigger, he was really a catalyst for the Gales in the first half at Santa Clara. Dukas mid-range from the baseline, off the rim no good, Asante with the rebound. Marshall Lonis had seven consecutive points for the Gales at one point, he finished the game with eight. Drive by Brown, Euro step around Johnson. Floater doesn't go. Saxon has the rebound stripped away, and it's last touch by Mitch. Off his leg and out of bounds to the Urban Knights. Here comes Stefan Hall, six foot grad transfer out of Oklahoma City. Rodney Munson comes off. Box set for the Knights in the black. Asante, he's got 10. And there's to Brown, turn around over LJ. Good defense by Logan, force the miss. 17-16, Gales trail Art U. Just over seven minutes in. Dukas has eight early for St. Mary's. Johnson with a half dozen. LJ lost the dribble, now wants to drive along the baseline. Elevates, and that's blocked out of bounds by the Urban Knights. St. Mary's will have it left side of the basket standard on the baseline. Gales are six of 10. Academy of Art is six of 10. Mike Asante leads all scorers with 10. Foul on the inbound as Dang Dang grabs Johnson fighting around a screen. First foul on the Urban Knights. But we'll try it again. 20 back on the shot clock now instead of nine. Marshall Onis into Saxon, handoff to Augustus. Drives and met by three jerseys on the baseline. Bounces it out to Bowen. They'll cycle it back around to Logan Johnson, 10 to shoot. Dukas, jab step, run off the line, little drive, floater up from the foul line, no good. Offensive rebound to Bowen. He'll kick out to Marshall Lonis. He'll drive with a head of steam, drop it off to Bowen. Low left, fouled on the uh, shot attempt by Clay Brown. And with 12.15 to play in the opening half, Bowen will go to the line for two shots. No surprise that KB Getting to the line off an offensive rebound. And he was such a monster on the boards in that game against Santa Clara on Saturday. A career high 15. In fact, back to back games with career highs and rebounds. He had 13 against San Diego here on Thursday. First free throw on the way. Good for Bowen. He ties this game at 17. Gales had 15 more offensive boards on Saturday. They have 58. 58 offensive rebounds in their last four games. Bowen knocks down both free throws and puts the Gales on top 18 to 17. Urban Knights are six of 10. Asante out to the corner for Brown, contested three. A little short, Dukas with the rebound. And here comes Marshallonis. Gales are shooting 50% early. They have four threes. Johnson inside, kick out to Marshall Onis. Thought about the three, and Ted stakes a, instead, I should say, takes a driving floater and swishes it home. So Marshall Onis is on the board. Gales have a three-point lead. Dang, dang, pulling up from the elbow. That curls off. Bowen, another rebound. He's got three early. Johnson hits Saxon on the roll, and Saxon is fouled. Looked like he was trying to get it out to the perimeter to Bowen. Fouled by Asante, and that will take us to a timeout here in Moraga. Pardon me, that's going to be on Latrell Williams. 
second team foul, or rather third team foul on the Urban Knights. 11.20 to play, timeout on the floor. Here, University Credit Union Pavilion with the Gales leading Academy of Art 20 to 17. We'll step aside. You're listening to Gales basketball from Learfield. Fourth Moore Tap Room and Grill in Orlando's Theater Square is now your official away game watch party location for St. Mary's Athletics. Enjoy apps, salads, burgers, or one of their signature handcrafted wood-fired pizzas on the patio with the giant fire pit. Plus, they offer discounts for all St. Mary's students, coaches, faculty, and alumni. Catch every game on one of their 10 big screen TVs or enjoy live music Thursday through Saturday evenings from 6.30 to 10.30. You can even have them cater your next event. For more information, visit thefourthboard.com or call 925-254-1183. Go Gales! Walnut Creek offers Gales fans quick and easy access to the excitement of a vibrant city and the charm of hometown California, all in one central location. Only seven miles from campus, Walnut Creek Hotels are the official lodging partners for St. Mary's. In a sunny, upscale, and comfortable environment at the base of Mount Diablo, Walnut Creek brings together an eclectic collection of culture, award-winning shopping, hotels, sports facilities, and cuisine to make you smile at every turn. Go to visitwalnutcreek.org to explore your next adventure. My name's Tony Tornado. I write and star in my own shows and movies. My crew knows that I dream of Hollywood. They also know that I love Mountain Dew. But there's so much more they don't know. Sometimes at night, I look up at the stars and think, I know why Mountain Dew's so crucial to my existence. But does anybody else? See, Dew's the green gold circulating through my veins. It makes Tony Tornado believe that he can do anything. So now you know my secret. But there's so much more you don't know. Do the do. This is Mitchell Saxon. More Gales basketball is on the way. Well, after a five for five start, the Urban Knights have missed six of their last seven. Meanwhile, St. Mary's has gone on a nine to two run. They lead at the Academy of Art 20 to 17. Jamal Fuller, 6'5", sophomore out of Toronto has checked in for the Urban Knights. Marshallonis, Harry Wessels for the Gales replacing Saxon. Marshallonis into Dukas, takes a left-hand drive across the lane, scores off the window. So Duke has a nice take, got to the offhand. He's into double figures now with 10 points. Double, double figures now, six of his last seven. Here's Williams dribbling on Wessels. Right hand drive into the body of Wessels, has to give it up. Fuller is blocked by Dukas, but a foul called. And that will get Fuller to the line for the Urban Knights with 10.59 to play. In half number 122-17, St. Mary's. This is the only game in the West Coast Conference, of course, tonight as conference play will pick back up on Thursday. Fuller, his first free throw on the way, no good. Santa Clara at Pepperdine. Pacific at San Diego. Gonzaga at USF, BYU at LMU. That Gonzaga at USF game, that's, that's a big one for the Dons, of course. An inopportune time to play the Zags after an 0-2 start. Fuller splits the free throws. Gales have an eight-point lead. St. Mary's, of course, returns to WCC play with Portland at 6 o'clock on Saturday. Pilots are 0-2. Johnson reverses it to Marshallonis. Now LJ on the right wing. Shot fake on a three. Penetrating a kick out to Dukas. Ten to shoot. Marshallonis will set up the half-court offense. Right off of Wessel's screen. Collects in the lane. Floater doesn't go. Gets his own board. And the Gales with a fresh shot clock. Johnson, wide open, right side three, pops out. Dukas crashes the glass. His tip doesn't go, and Williams with the rebound for Art U. Here come the Urban Knights into the front court. Stephon Hall drops it off to the trailing Williams. Step back, long two over Wessels. Pinball's out. Urban Knights started five for five. One for their last eight. Midway through the first half, 22-18, the St. Mary's lead. Gales haven't got a whole lot going in the way of post offense. Marshallonis penetrating, fouled. Reach in foul called on Latrell Williams. We'll see if they give Goose free throws here. It'll be on the floor. Munson checks back in. The seven footer, junior out of North Hills, Pennsylvania, Richard Rivers Jr., is in for the first time for the Urban Knights. Gales lead by four. Little 11 to three run here for St. Mary's. Marshallonis surveying, comes into Dukas. 
17 to shoot. Alex probing. Kick out Marshallonis. He'll penetrate, kick out to Dukas. Three on the way, got another one. Game high 13 for Dukas. That is already his third threes, five of eight from the field. Marshallonis falls over, Hall is open, right foul line extended, swishes home the J. First field goal for the Urban Knights in over four minutes. 25-20. Augustus, a hesitation. Dukas, a shot fake and a drive up and under. Can't finish with the right hand. Here comes Munson with speed. Urban Knights have a five on four if they hurry. Fuller runs into Marshallonis, who draws the charge. Had to be a turnover on the Academy of Art. Fuller picks up his second. Sixth team foul on the Urban Knights. Luke Barrett will check in for Dukas. 13 points early for Alex. Gales have out-rebounded the Urban Knights 10 to 6. Both teams shooting 50% from the field. So Marshallonis with Johnson, Barrett, Bowen, and Wessels. Johnson to the foul line. Mid lane line, left side, floater too strong. Rebound, loose, picked up by Bowen. Bowen in the paint, shovels it outside to Barrett. And a fresh 20 on the shot clock for the Gales. Marshallonis, kick out LJ. Run off the line, bounce pass middle of the paint. Wessels tied up, and a foul called. It's going to go on the Urban Knights. It'll be on Fuller. That's his second, sixth team foul on Art U. Johnson comes off, Mahaney back in. Gales lead by five. St. Mary's, six different players have an assist for the Gales. Wessels hand off Marshallonis. Feed the post. Harry back to the basket on the seven-footer Rivers. Backing down, gets the right hand, right box. Can't score over the seven-footer. Rebound cleared by Asante. Munson in the open floor with speed, fouled by Marshallonis. On the cross. Well, you heard Mickey McConnell talk about how quick some of these guards with the Urban Knights are. We've seen that on display, that move right there. Dang Dang returns, and Reggie Fuller comes off. Gales are 9 of 20 from the field. Academy of Art, and they hit their first five shots. They're two for their last night, but they're still shooting 50%. Here's Asante, poked out of his hands by Marshallonis. Good hands. Marshallonis, a one-on-one -on -one into the front court with Deng. Too heavy off the glass after the Euro step. And now Rivers on the rebound. Got away with the travel, but threw it out of bounds anyway. And the Gales will keep the basketball after this timeout. 7.52 to play in the opening half. St. Mary's 25, Academy of Art 20. This is Gales basketball from Learfield. Hey, Gales. Diablo Valley Insurance Agency is a full-service, independent insurance brokerage located in Walnut Creek. Founded in 1956, our agency has been providing insurance services to clients throughout Northern California and the Western United States for over 50 years. Our team of insurance professionals will take the time to understand your needs, whether personal or related to your business, and provide the best products and services for you. Go to DiabloValleyInsurance.com today to request a quote. Diablo Valley Insurance Agency. Local. Independent. Trusted. Panini's Ristorante has been delivering quality food and beverages to the Moraga area for years and is a proud hometown partner of St. Mary's College Athletics. Casual dining with the whole family or an adult night out, they have you covered. Visit them at 1375 Moraga Way for a wonderful experience. Panini's Ristorante. Since 1990, the team at Common Interest Management has been privileged to serve boards of directors and community homeowners of many of the Bay Area's most prestigious communities. Whether working with a newly established community in the earliest stages of development or a more mature community, our experienced managers consult with the board to share best practices in all areas of community management. Common Interest tailors its services for communities of all sizes. If you are currently evaluating a new management company, please visit us at commoninterest.com. This is St. Mary's Basketball on the Gales Radio Network. Welcome 
Welcome back to University Credit Union Pavilion. St. Mary's leads Academy of Art 25-20. The Gales will have the basketball out of the timeout. Reminder, you can get the latest news on the Gales by checking out smcgales.com. Up-to-date scores, video highlights, and stories about St. Mary's all in one place. Mahaney opens straight away, takes the three, comes up short. No, ribs in. Mahaney thought that one was short. That is a Moraga roll for the Lafayette native and the Campolindo Cougar. That's his first bucket. It puts the Gales up by eight. Also, Gales on social media, at SMC Gales, Twitter, Facebook. Rivers downstairs, good pass from Dang Dang, and Rivers able to go up and score the seven-footer with his first bucket. Cuts the Gale lead to a half dozen again, 28-22. Here comes Mitchell Saxon back into the ball game for the Gales, at least waiting at the scores table. Mahaney mid-range over Rivers, way short, barely grazed the front rim. And now Hall sprinting ahead for the Urban Knights, who trail by only a half dozen. Munson sees a lane, turns around, met by three white jerseys. Back out to the perimeter for Dang Dang. Hiding behind the screen, spinning on Marshall Lonas. Wild shot, somehow gets it to fall. And Dang Dang shot that from his hip. 28-24. Four in a row for the Urban Knights. Mahaney with the drive, scoops it up and in with the left hand. Boy, nifty over the seven-footer. Mahaney's so quick with that offhand. Kind of cradling the ball in his left hand, just getting it up off the window. Beating the shot blocker to the rim. Lead back to six. Asante spinning on Bowen. Tough shot up on the way and good. Count it and one. So now Asante will go to the line. Chance for a three-point play. 6.19 to go. He has not scored in nearly 10 minutes, but he's got a dozen now. Johnson checks back in and... Marshallonis and Wessels come off. Down to a four-point game. And Asante's free throw rattles out. 30 to 26. Scoreboard here in the arena has a 30 to 28 score. And Gales do lead by four. Mahaney has the last five. Downstairs, here's Saxon. Left-hand hook on the way. Can't score, gets his own board, shot fake, goes back up. Rivers swats it away, and Munson collects the loose ball for the Urban Knights. The lead is four, Munson. Now Rivers back to the basket. Turnaround jumper, falling away, knocks it down. Man, alive. The Urban Knights. They are 11 of 18 in the first half. This is a little 8-2 run. Mahaney trying to get it outside to the corner for Barrett. Knocked away. Gales on the other end. They are 11 of 26. They're out rebounding the Urban Knights by three with six offensive boards, but it's not enough. Ball's dropping through the hoop. Mahaney mid-range. Yes. He's got seven straight for St. Mary's, 32-28. Stephon Hall, Rivers, little heat check, wants the three, back rim miss. The seven-footer, he can hit that shot. He's hit two of them so far this year, they give him the freedom to take them. Mahaney, three over Rivers, front rim, in. Another shooter's roll for Mahaney. He has 10 in a row for St. Mary's, and this is his 12th consecutive game into double figures. He's four of six from the floor, and oh, he's gotten a hometown bounce a couple times. Asante pulls it back on Bowen. Three badly missed off the backboard, off the rim, no good. Rivers with the offensive board, hits a cutting dang dang down the lane for two. So 35-30. Gales are struggling to separate against the Urban Knights here. Their biggest lead has been eight. Johnson with the drive, gets in the body of Rivers, draws the foul, can't hit the shot, but he'll go to the line for two when we come back. 
here in Moraga. 3.58 to play in the opening half. St. Mary's with a 35-30 lead over the Academy of Art. We'll step aside. You're listening to Gales Basketball from Learfield. Hey, Gales fans. If you love attending live sporting events and concerts, then be sure to check out Tickets for Less. At ticketsforless.com, you'll find the best selection of tickets to all your favorite events, and you never pay steep per-ticket service fees like you do on other sites. Whether you're looking to see your gals or are planning a trip to see a big event in the city, ticketsforless.com should always be your first stop for tickets. Ticketsforless.com, proud partner of St. Mary's Athletics and live event goers everywhere. Bay Alarm is proud to sponsor the St. Mary's Gales. How good is your defense? When it comes to protecting your home or business, Bay Alarm has been bringing the best for over 75 years. With security camera and fire alarm systems designed to fit your specific needs, expertly installed and professionally monitored 24-7. Ready to up your security game? Go to BayAlarm.com and let our team of security experts get you protected today. Go Gales! Walnut Creek offers Gales fans quick and easy access to the excitement of a vibrant city and the charm of hometown California, all in one central location. Only seven miles from campus, Walnut Creek Hotels are the official lodging partners for St. Mary's. In a sunny, upscale, and comfortable environment at the base of Mount Diablo, Walnut Creek brings together an eclectic collection of culture, award-winning shopping, hotels, sports facilities, and cuisine to make you smile at every turn. Go to visitwalnutcreek.org to explore your next adventure. This is Augustus Marshallonis, and you're listening to Gales Basketball. 3.58 to play until halftime here in Moraga. St. Mary's with a 35-30 lead on the Academy of Art. We'd love to see you when the Gales return here to University Credit Union Pavilion on Saturday. They'll host Portland getting back to West Coast Conference play at 6 o'clock. Tickets are still available and can be purchased by logging on to smcgales.com or stopping by the Gales ticket office during regular business hours. Logan Johnson to the line for two shots. He has a half dozen on two of five from the field. Sealed the Santa Clara game with two free throws with uh, 12 seconds left. 63% from the line this year. Academy of Art, by the way, they got off to their first ever 4-0 start this season. As Johnson misses the first free throw. Athletic Department was established in 2006. Began a three-year transition to the NCAA in 2009. Johnson slides home the second, gives the Gales a six-point lead again. Finally eligible for postseason play in 2012. Of course, made their first postseason a year ago. 36-30. Latrell Williams dribbling on Saxon. Floater from the middle of the paint, drops through. Trademark Gale defense has, has not had an effect on the Urban Knights. 59% for their 13 of 22. Johnson left off a screen. Dukas with a drive. Mahaney wide open from the corner. It's on the way and good. Three ball for Mahaney. He's got a Baker's dozen with a 317 to play in the opening half. Ties Dukas for a game high. Both Mahaney and Dukas with three threes. The Gales are eight of 12 from three. Now uh, St. Mary's will go small here with Joshua Jefferson checking in for Mitchell Saxon. He'll take a turn on Latrell Williams, and he fouls Clay Brown, hedging a ball screen. It'll be the first on J. Jeff, fifth on the Gales. We'll have a 39-32 lead. It would have been nice. They averaged nearly 76 points a game. Here's Munson turning the corner. Jump stop. Drops it off. Williams can't score with the right hand. Bowen with a rebound for the Gales. He's got a half dozen boards already. And St. Mary's leading by seven. Eight assists on 14 field goals for the Gales. Johnson probing, finds Jefferson, open straight away. Three is short, offensive rebound to Bowen. Hits Jefferson on the back, got off his fingertips. Jefferson runs it down to the corner. Now Bowen is open from the left side for three. That's off the front rim, no good. And Asante with the rebound for Art U. 
Urban Knights will push ahead. Asante trailing the play. Right foul on extended. Terminates. 2.14 to play. Back cutter is dang, dang. Blocked at the rim by LJ, but fouled in the process. First foul on Johnson. Sixth team foul on St. Mary's. 2.12 to go. And dang, dang to the line. 11 and a half points a game last year for Dang Dang. Spent two seasons at Eastern Illinois. Made eight starts for the Panthers. Jefferson off and Saxon back on. As Dang Dang rattles home his first free throw. Actually went to the same high school as uh, Keyshawn Justice of Santa Clara. Madison East in Wisconsin. Second free throw strong. Gets his own rebound. Munson for three. Too strong. And Johnson with the board for the Gales, who lead by a half dozen. Gales have 24 points so far from three. They're 8 of 14 from outside. Duke is posting up, backing down on Brown, spins the right hand, stripped. Brown will push ahead. Dang, dang in the open floor again. Reverse lane in transition. Good defense by Mahaney. And fouled on the rebound is Kyle Bowen. Lost a shoe in the process. A good defense by Mahaney as Mahaney really forced that shot to be rushed by Dang Dang. Went after the ball and Dang Dang maybe fumbled it just a little bit. Well, that foul on Munson will put the Gales in the bonus. The eighth team foul on Art U. And KB to the stripe. Well, the difference in this game right now, a 14-3 St. Mary's run to turn a 15-11 deficit into a 25-18 lead. Bow in front end of a 1-1, one one, too strong. Saxon, an offensive board. Swarm there by three black jerseys. Goes back up low right, sticks it back in. That's just Mitch's second bucket. He's got four points. And the Gales have matched their biggest lead at 8, 41-33. Brown, pull up Jay off the bounce. Long two is good. I think you'd live with that shot if you're Randy Bennett. That's Brown's first basket, first field goal anyway. Yeah, lead six. Mahaney is fouled. One and one upcoming as Brown commits the personal with 106 left until halftime. I'm not sure Randy Bennett is going to be extremely thrilled when he looks at the box score and sees 54% for Academy of Art from the field, at least to this point, as Mahaney switches home free throw number one. You heard Dave Lewis has talked about it time and time again. That's the one area on the box score where Randy Bennett looks to evaluate his team's performance. Right now, the Urban Knights are 14 of 26. Mahaney hits both free throws, puts the Gales back up by eight. Asante dribbling on Bowen. Williams spins to the left hand, back to the right on Saxon. Turning over the left shoulder, that doesn't go. Saxon with the rebound. He'll get it up to Mahaney. About a 20-second differential between the two clocks. Yales can push their lead to double digits. Mahaney for three, no good. Rebound tapped, loose on the floor, picked up by Saxon. Rise up, blocked by Williams, and it's run down by Munson. Munson with speed to the front court. About a three-second differential between the two clocks. That is the... Second block for Art U. Top side, Brown wants the three. Offline, foul on the rebound. And that will go on Mahaney. Well, that will be a one and one now for Latrell Williams. 21.3 on the game clock. There's Mahaney's first, the seventh team foul. Williams, he's 67% from the line, and it's too strong. Bowen with the rebound, and the Gales with the shot clock off. They can play for one. As Bowen stretches the pass for Bowen, or rather, uh, Johnson stretches the pass for Bowen, breaking the press into the front court. 
Nine on the game clock. Here's Barrett driving. Lost the dribble into the hands of Munson. Munson with four. With three, hits the trailing Brown. Downstairs to Dang. He will score at the buzzer. Not a good sequence for the Gales going into the break as Barrett turns it over, turns it into transition for the Academy of Art. And on the fast break, the Urban Knights have outscored the Gales 7-0. And St. Mary's holds a six-point lead going into the break as they give up 37 points to the Urban Knights in half number one. I can't imagine, despite having the lead, that Randy Bennett is going to be too pleased by that fact. So at the half, St. Mary's 43, Academy of Art 37. Our halftime show commences next. We'll step aside. You're listening to Gales Basketball from Learfield. Show your school spirit and earn rewards as the official credit union of St. Mary's College, University Credit Union offers a custom-designed rewards credit card for the Gale family. Enjoy no annual fee while earning unlimited points, making the UCU St. Mary's credit card the perfect card to use for everyday use. Plus, when you open a UCU checking account, you'll show even more Gale pride with the St. Mary's College debit card. Visit ucu.org to learn more and apply today. Federally insured by NCUA. Fourth Moore Tap Room and Grill in Orendo's Theater Square is now your official away game watch party location for St. Mary's Athletics. Enjoy apps, salads, burgers, or one of their signature handcrafted wood-fired pizzas on the patio with the giant fire pit. Plus, they offer discounts for all St. Mary's students, coaches, faculty, and alumni. Catch every game on one of their 10 big screen TVs or enjoy live music Thursday through Saturday evenings from 6.30 to 10.30. You can even have them cater your next event. For more information, visit thefourthboard.com or call 925-254-1183. Go Gales! Bay Alarm is proud to sponsor the St. Mary's Gales. How good is your defense? When it comes to protecting your home or business, Bay Alarm has been bringing the best for over 75 years. With security camera and fire alarm systems designed to fit your specific needs, expertly installed and professionally monitored 24-7. Ready to up your security game? Go to BayAlarm.com and let our team of security experts get you protected today. Go Gales! Welcome to the Visit Walnut Creek Halftime Show on the Gales Radio Network. Walnut Creek looks to brighten your world, connecting you to the best California experiences under the sun. Go to visitwalnutcreek.org to learn more. A first half recap, stats, and more are all ahead. Back courtside, here's Alex Jensen. Welcome back to Moraga, where uh, maybe, well, maybe it's a little bit tighter than you would have uh, expected as St. Mary's leads Academy of Art by 6, 43-37. Gales led in the first half by as many as eight, but the Academy of Art finished the uh, first half with a bucket at the horn and, in fact, outscoring the Gales over the final seven minutes and 41 seconds 17 to uh, 15, which may not seem like a whole lot, but again, the Urban Knights started five of five from the field, took a 15-11 lead. So, you know, that number, despite being, you know, relatively small, the, the margin of, uh, of that time for the Urban Knights makes a big difference when you consider the fact that Academy of Arts started so well. The Gales are shooting 45% from the field. They started six of seven. Since that time, St. Mary's is uh, nine of uh, 20 of uh, 26 they're 8 of 15 from three but they're being outscored in the paint by the urban knights 16 to 10 despite out rebounding the academy of art by 8 22 to 14 and nine offensive rebounds for st mary's has led to just uh, four second chance points again for randy bennett i think uh you know the emphasis here is going to be uh defensively as the uh, urban knights shot nearly 52 percent from the field in half number one, 15 of 29. And you always hear transition defense in our pre in our pregame shows with Mickey McConnell. Well, the Academy of Art, they turned turnovers into offenses. The Gales turned it over five times in that opening half. And uh, for the Urban Knights, that turned into seven points uh, for, for them, including the final bucket of the first half. So the Gales, again, you know, a chance to really extend the lead at times tonight, but Academy of Art has stuck around to their credit tonight through the first 20 minutes. They have not let the Gales get the lead to double digits. And uh, for 
St. Mary's, uh, the lead at half is just six. Well, earlier today, got a chance to catch up with Chris Howell. This will be a two-part interview, part one tonight. Uh, so Chris Howell will join us for your halftime entertainment. We'll have part two of the interview on Saturday when the Gales host Portland. So uh, Gales redshirt freshman Chris Howell for your halftime entertainment. And uh, we'll come back after that in a quick break. You're listening to Gales basketball from Learfield. Joined by Chris Howell this week uh, for your halftime entertainment. And, uh, you know, Chris, you've been here for, I guess, a year and a half now. And, and you, you hear a lot of people talk about the red shirt year. How do you feel the red shirt year helped you? Oh, I believe the red shirt year really allowed me to gain confidence in uh, my team and just even just continue to learn the program, the ins and outs. Uh, nothing changed other than just not stepping foot on the court during games. Uh, practices, I got a lot of reps. Traveled with the team, which is pretty unheard of for most teams and most uh, colleges. Um, but yeah, nothing really changed. So just really uh, getting integrated with the team, with the players, with the coaches, learning the program, and just at the same time, just working on my skill set and just getting to grow. I, I, I really loved it. I'm thankful I did. What would you say the biggest difference is when, you know, going from high school to Division One? I? I mean, it's, it's a big jump, right? What, what was the biggest difference for you? I think the biggest difference for me was really just the size of everybody. I think that's pretty night and day coming from graduating from Torrey Pines, being one of the biggest players on my team, one of the biggest players in the city, um, to coming here and being on the shorter end of my team and playing against other guys, uh, not necessarily in height, but just size as in strength and weight. Everybody's bigger, faster, stronger. So I think adjusting to that was the biggest difference for me. Was that an emphasis for you, you know, last season during the time where you didn't have to get out there and compete in games was to maybe add a little bulk? Yes, for sure. Um, Mike Neal, he did a great job. Coaches do a great, yeah, super big time. And, uh, yeah, so just help getting me to eat the right things, eat the right amounts, work out enough, as well as still having time to recover because, like you said, I'm not on the court. I'm still grinding pretty much uh, every day when, when, when when I don't have the off days. So, yeah, it's uh, my working on my body, gaining weight, getting stronger was one of the biggest things, yeah. Tell me about your recruitment process. Uh, you know, when did you kind of first start talking to St. Mary's and how did you identify St. Mary's as a place you could see yourself? Yeah, so this is actually funny because um, everything kind of fell into play and like connecting all the dots. So I worked out with Lamont uh, Smith as well as John Block. And, and this is before... Um, before and during the time I was getting recruited by Coach Bennett. And with that being said, all three of them had ties with each other um, in some way of coaching or playing for one another. Um, so I was working out or working out with the two guys and then getting recruited by Coach Bennett. One day it all aligned and everybody found out they're all connected. So it just was like, oh, yeah, this is a perfect spot. And then on top of a lot of prayers and everything like that, so that really just felt like this was the right place for me. What about St. Mary's, you know, the program, the school, et cetera, et cetera? What about it made a good fit? Made it a good fit for Chris Howell? Uh, the culture. Um, it's a real family vibe here. As soon as I stepped fo foot on campus, uh, I was recruited during COVID, so I wasn't officially able to come on any official visits or meet the coaches. So I actually committed before even meeting the coaches in person. So I remember my family and I, my parents and I came up for an unofficial visit where we just got to see the players, Logan and uh, Tommy Cousy of last year, uh, walked me around campus. I got to watch an open gym and just, yeah, just the guys, just, I just felt like a brotherhood instantly. And I just felt like I was a part of the team, even though I wasn't officially yet. So just, yeah, just the culture and just uh, everybody, how the, how the program carries themselves, really. You mentioned, you know, the COVID season. That was, I guess, your senior year of high school, right? Was 2020 into 2021. What was it like to navigate, you know, a pandemic like that uh, in high school, not just, you know, basketball-wise? Because I know you guys push your season back to the spring, right? So not just basketball-wise, but, you know, just normal everyday stuff, going to class, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so my senior year at Torrey Pines, we had the option to have a hybrid school year especially the second semester of the school is offered hybrid. So as far as when it comes to basketball, our coaches, it was obviously our decision at the end of the day, but our coaches was 
encouraging us to stay online so we can stay safe so we're able to meet all the requirements of the COVID and everything. So, um, yeah, during that time, it was, it was very weird. Um, everything was on the fly. And everything was just changing daily, new rules, new laws. And so, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was unique for sure. But at the same time, it was a, it was a great learning period as well, um, learning on the go, um, working around um, each other, trying to stay unified as a team in high school. And um, that also just falls into play, just my recruitment here. It also just allowed me to learn on the fly and just grow as a person. Show your school spirit and earn rewards as the official credit union of St. Mary's College, University Credit Union offers a custom-designed rewards credit card for the Gale family. Enjoy no annual fee while earning unlimited points, making the UCU St. Mary's credit card the perfect card to use for everyday use. Plus, when you open a UCU checking account, you'll show even more Gale pride with the St. Mary's College debit card. Visit ucu.org to learn more and apply today. Federally insured by NCUA. Walnut Creek offers Gales fans quick and easy access to the excitement of a vibrant city and the charm of hometown California, all in one central location. Only seven miles from campus, Walnut Creek Hotels are the official lodging partners for St. Mary's. In a sunny, upscale, and comfortable environment at the base of Mount Diablo, Walnut Creek brings together an eclectic collection of culture, award-winning shopping, hotels, sports facilities, and cuisine to make you smile at every turn. Go to visitwalnutcreek.org to explore your next adventure. My name's Tony Tornado. I write and star in my own shows and movies. My crew knows that I dream of Hollywood. They also know that I love Mountain Dew. But there's so much more they don't know. Sometimes at night, I look up at the stars and think, I know why Mountain Dew's so crucial to my existence. But does anybody else? See, Dew's the green gold circulating through my veins. It makes Tony Tornado believe that he can do anything. So now you know my secret. But there's so much more you don't know. Do the do. Welcome back to Moraga at the break. It is uh, St. Mary's 43, Academy of Art 37. Again, for half number one, the Gales shot 45% from the field, 15 of 33, 8 of 15 from three. So from two, the Gales uh, just 7 of 18 from inside the arc. St. Mary's out-rebounded the Urban Knights 22 to 14. In half number one, the Gales got 15 from Aiden Mahaney on, 15, on a five of eight shooting and 13 from Alex Dukas. Logan Johnson had seven, but St. Mary's, despite the uh, rebounding advantage, being outscored in the paint by the Urban Knights, 16 to 10. And really the Gales, you know, last couple games or so, have not gotten a whole lot going in the post as uh, Mitchell Sachs has been held to just four points on two of four shooting. Let's have four rebounds. Kyle Bowen, by the way, nine more rebounds tonight. This guy is averaging over his last four games 11.3 rebounds a game. He's got nine more tonight. But you know, first things first, the Gales are going to have to get some stops. The Academy of Art is shooting 51%, and that is uh, not a number you want to see. Despite you know the Urban Knights being a very good club uh, on the offensive end, especially and in, in a Divi and a, a Division II tournament team, I think Randy Bennett would tell you that he expects more from his team who as of this morning, was ranked eighth in the country in defensive efficiency in Division One. So the Gales will uh, look for a better showing in half number two. A reminder, coming to University Credit Union, P Union Pavilion with a group is a great way to spend a night. Discounted tickets, prepaid food vouchers, and more make a Gales basketball adding the thing to do. For more information, go to smcgales.com or contact the group sales department at 925-631-4265. Points in the paint and limiting transition. Those will be your keys to the second half, and we'll have that coming up next. St. Mary's leads Academy of Art 43-37. Second half coming up right after this. You're listening to Gales Basketball from Learfield. Bay Alarm is proud to sponsor the St. Mary's Gales. How good is your defense? When it comes to protecting your home or business, Bay Alarm has been bringing the best for over 75 years. With security camera and fire alarm systems designed to fit your specific needs, expertly installed and professionally monitored 24-7. Ready to up your security game? Go to BayAlarm.com and let our team of security experts get you protected today. Go Gales! 
Out here, we charge into the heartland with Mountain Dew. Out here, there's no rush hour, just the rush of flying wide open on glassy water at 5 a.m. with your first dew in hand. And there's no spin class, just bright green spinner bait that ironically matches your second dew. Out here, we don't just play big buck hunt, we hunt actual big bucks. And out here, the best road is off-road, and the color of your truck is mud. Out here, it's dew. Since 1990, the team at Common Interest Management has been privileged to serve boards of directors and community homeowners of many of the Bay Area's most prestigious communities. Whether working with a newly established community in the earliest stages of development or a more mature community, our experienced managers consult with the board to share best practices in all areas of community management. Common Interest tailors its services for communities of all sizes. If you are currently evaluating a new management company, please visit us at commoninterest.com. You're listening to St. Mary's Basketball on the Gales Radio Network. Once again, here's Alex Jensen. Gales will start with the basketball in the second half, leading Academy of Art 43-37, starting five on the floor for both clubs. Mahaney, Dukas, Johnson, Bowen, and Saxon for St. Mary's. Mahaney has a game-high 15, and he collects the pass in the backcourt, and the Gales will initiate the offense to start half number two, leading by six. Johnson has seven points, gives it up to Mahaney. Dukas with 13. Lost it, recovers, feeds the post to Saxon. They clear the side for him, backing down low left. Help comes, now backs off. Saxon gets the middle of the paint, easy money. Turns over the left shoulder with a right hand hook and that is as easy as it's been all night for Saxon. He gives the Gales an eight point lead. Top side, Williams dribbling on Bowen. Up top it comes to Brown. 45-37. Williams met by Saxon at the right box. Tough shot as Saxon walls up, grazes the front rim. Rebound falls to KB. He's got 10 boards. Fourth time in the last five games that Bowen has collected double-digit rebounds. Here's a steal to run out for Munson. Fouled by Johnson, and Munson will go to the line. There's been a few sloppy passes tonight for St. Mary's. Munson stepped right in the passing lane that time. There's the Gales' sixth turnover, the sixth Academy of Arts steal. And Munson will have two shots. It's 19.03 to play. Rodney Munson, he came to Academy of Art by way of Independence Community College, started his career at NAIA LSU Alexandria, where he well, he really scored a conference offensive player of the year as a sophomore there. Averaged 20, nearly 24 points per game in league play. Splits the free throws, rebound high in the air. Picked up by Williams, ripped it right out of the hands of Dukas. Here's Dang Dang for three. That's off the front rim, rebound Caroms to Saxon. So St. Mary's leads by seven. Minute 10 into half number two. Mahaney, outside left. Dribble poked away by Williams. Another St. Mary's turnover in the seventh Academy of Arts steal. And now Mahaney is whistled for a foul in the open floor. That's Mahaney's second foul, second team foul on St. Mary's. Give Academy of Art credit. They have hung right there with the Gales. Dang Dang on Dukas. Here's Williams with a head of steam. Can't scoop it home. Good defense by Saxon. Two Gales were there for the rebound. Bowen knocked that out of Dukas' hands with the other way around. And the Urban Knights back with it as Asante is fouled on the drive. It has been that kind of night for St. Mary's. They lead by seven. And two shots upcoming here for Asante. There were three white jerseys there for the rebound. None of them could corral it. And Academy of Art right there to the basketball. And getting back to the line. 18 12 to play. No, Asante had 10 early for the Urban Knights. He's two of three from the line tonight, and his free throw is up and good. Two double doubles a year ago for Asante. Physical, 6'7, 228. Missed the second free throw. Dukas grabs the board. So St. Mary's leading by six. 
Gales have a bucket from Saxon. Both Academy of Art points coming at the free throw line. Saxon high post left side, hits a back cutter. That's Mahaney, shot fake, and then goes up and scores off the window from the left block. Game high 17 for Mahaney. Gale lead is eight again. Williams to the corner for Asante. Dribbling on Bowen across the lane, steps back to the free throw line, now leans in, can't score. Williams grabs the loose ball after the air ball and stepping on the sideline is Munson after the kick out. And a turnover on the Urban Knights. We'll send it back the other way. First Academy of Art turnover in half number two. Mahaney sprints it past pressure into the front court. Penetrating, drops it off to Saxon. Shot fake, found no shot as Saxon was bumped into by, looked like Brown, indeed it was, Clay Brown, so foul coming on the floor. That foul on Brown is second. He's the Urban Knights leading scorer at 13.8 points per game. He's got two points on one of five from the field tonight. Duke is catch and shoot three, that's way too strong. He missed everything. And Munson grabs a loose ball. 47-39, the St. Mary's lead. Munson terminates, gives it up to Williams. Nine to shoot. Munson spinning into the lane, foul. So that is number three now on Mahaney. And Munson will go back to the line. Three minutes into the second half. This will be free throws 13 and 14 for the Urban Knights, but they have been unable to capitalize. The Eels have really been fortunate that the Academy of Art is 6 of 13 from the free throw line thus far. Munson gets the second. 7 of 14 from the stripe. They have shot 14 free throws to the Gales 7. 47-40. Mahaney for Bowen. Really been fronting the post on Saxon. 11 to shoot. Johnson crosses over. Kick out Bowen. Right wing three on the way. He got it. And the Gales, their first double-digit lead of the ball game. It comes three and a half minutes into the second half. Transition opportunity for Dang Dang. Sent away. Mahaney with the loose ball. And here come the Gales, leading by 10. Johnson in the corner. Pass the overplay. Bounce pass across the post to Saxon. Fouled. And Mitch will get to the line 16-16 to play as Munson commits the personal. Well, Saxon, six points, six boards, two assists for Saxon. In 18 minutes, the Gales have finally pushed their lead to double figures. They're three of four to start the second half, and that foul on Munson, his second, and the second team foul on Art U here in the second half. Saxon too strong on his first free throw. Barrett returns for Dukas. Saxon is 57% from the free throw line this year. It was four of four the other night against Santa Clara. Last three games, 11 of 15 from the stripe. He splits the free throws here. That, by the way, is 73%. And that's, you know, if Mitch can stay at that number, 73%, and that would be an ideal world for Randy Bennett and the Gales. Williams will take the three. No good. Johnson with the rebound. Now LJ pushing. The transition defense there by the Urban Knights. 11-point lead for St. Mary's. It's their biggest. Foul called on Saxon, setting the screen. So that is number three now on Mitch. Fifth team foul already on St. Mary's in the second half. And that takes us to a timeout on the floor here in Moraga. 15.44 to play. St. Mary's leads the Urban Knights by 11. 51 to 40, your score will step aside. You're listening to Gales Basketball from Learfield. 
Panini's Ristorante has been delivering quality food and beverages to the Moraga area for years and is a proud hometown partner of St. Mary's College Athletics. Casual dining with the whole family or an adult night out, they have you covered. Visit them at 1375 Moraga Way for a wonderful experience. Panini's Restaurante. Diablo Valley Insurance Agency is a full-service independent insurance brokerage located in Walnut Creek. Founded in 1956, our agency has been providing insurance services to clients throughout Northern California and the Western United States for over 50 years. Our team of insurance professionals will take the time to understand your needs, whether personal or related to your business, and provide the best products and services for you. Go to DiabloValleyInsurance.com today to request a quote. Diablo Valley Insurance Agency, local, independent, trusted. Show your school spirit and earn rewards as the official credit union of St. Mary's College, University Credit Union offers a custom-designed rewards credit card for the Gale family. Enjoy no annual fee while earning unlimited points, making the UCU St. Mary's credit card the perfect card to use for everyday use. Plus, when you open a UCU checking account, you'll show even more Gale pride with the St. Mary's College debit card. Visit ucu.org to learn more and apply today. Federally insured by NCUA. This is Kyle Bowen, and you're listening to Gals Basketball. 15.44 to play on this Tuesday night. Moraga, St. Mary's 51, Academy of Art 40. Gales have outscored the Urban Knights 8-3 since the break. Mahaney, Johnson, Barrett, Bowen, and Saxon for the Gales. The uh, Urban Knights have yet to make a field goal in the second half. They're 0 of 6. They're counter with Dang Dang. And Munson, Asante, Brown, and Williams. Asante defended by Bowen. He started off hot. He has only three points since the opening six minutes. Tough shot for Dang Dang. Curls off the rim. Good defense by Luke Barrett. <laughs> Kyle Bowen gobbles up his 11th rebound. And not even to his average yet over his last four contests. Mahaney with the drive, got right to the cup and lays it in. Gale's slowly separating here, leading by 13. Mid-range from Brown. Banks it out, Barrett with the rebound. Urban Knights, they're 0 of 8 here in the second half. And this is kind of more what Gale fans are used to seeing, not necessarily 0 of 8, but St. Mary's defense is now beginning to set the tone. Saxon at the free throw line, spinning on Williams, falling away with the right hand hook too strong, and Asante with the rebound in traffic for RU. 53 to 40. Asante trying to muscle his way inside on Bowen, has to give it up to Williams. 14 to shoot. Asante lost the dribble, turns it over. Good defense by KB. The second turnover on Academy of Art in half number two. As Scott Waterman will take a timeout, organize his troops who are 0 of 8 from the field in half number two. That takes us to a timeout here in Moraga as well. We will step aside with 14-16 to play. St. Mary's leads Academy of Art 53-40. to You're listening to Gales Basketball from Learfield. Fourth Moore Tap Room and Grill in Orendo's Theater Square is now your official away game watch party location for St. Mary's Athletics. Enjoy apps, salads, burgers, or one of their signature handcrafted wood-fired pizzas on the patio with the giant fire pit. Plus, they offer discounts for all St. Mary's students, coaches, faculty, and alumni. Catch every game on one of their 10 big screen TVs or enjoy live music Thursday through Saturday evenings from 6.30 to 10.30. You can even have them cater your next event. For more information, visit thefourthboard.com or call 925-254-1183. Go Gales! Walnut Creek offers Gales fans quick and easy access to the excitement of a vibrant city and the charm of hometown California, all in one central location. Only seven miles from campus, Walnut Creek Hotels are the official lodging partners for St. Mary's. In a sunny, upscale, and comfortable environment at the base of Mount Diablo, Walnut Creek brings together an eclectic collection of culture, award-winning shopping, hotels, sports facilities, and cuisine to make you smile at every turn. Go to visitwalnutcreek.org to explore your next adventure. Hey Gales fans, 
If you love attending live sporting events and concerts, then be sure to check out Tickets for Less. At ticketsforless.com, you'll find the best selection of tickets to all your favorite events, and you never pay steep per-ticket service fees like you do on other sites. Whether you're looking to see your gals or are planning a trip to see a big event in the city, ticketsforless.com should always be your first stop for tickets. Ticketsforless.com, proud partner of St. Mary's Athletics and live event goers everywhere. This is Aiden Mahaney, and you're listening to Gales Basketball. Aiden Mahaney has a game-high 19 on 7 of 10 shooting. St. Mary's leads Academy of Art 53-40. to 14-16 to play in our ball game on this Tuesday night. Gustus Marshallonis has checked in for Logan Johnson. He's joined by Mahaney, Barrett, Bowen, and Saxon. And Marshallonis with the pass in the backcourt. Stephen Hall, or Stephon Hall, pardon me. Back in for Art U. Mahaney off a screen, hits Saxon on the roll. Beautiful feed. Saxon missed the bunny. He was right there and just got wedged between the backboard and the rim. And now a foul called on Luke Barrett in the open floor. Yeah, Mitch is mad at himself. That was a perfect feed from Mahaney over the top to the rolling Saxon. And Mitch was right there. He just missed it. That was the 16th foul by, committed by St. Mary's. So the Urban Knights now with Asante on the right baseline. Academy of Art, 0 of 8 to start the second half. Stefan Hall pushes it in. Nicely done, the patience waiting with a man on his hip from the right lane line. So the Urban Knights now 1 of 9 in the second half. 53-42 St. Mary's. Here's Mahaney, 12 to shoot, gives it up, KB. Trying to get it downstairs to Saxon. And Baird a bad pass, tipped and stolen by Brown. Fourth Gale turnover here in the second half. Brown, bounce pass to the post, knocked away. And that's last touch by Williams. Just couldn't handle it. So a missed layup and a turnover on back-to-back -back possessions. Gales lead by 11, seven minutes into the second half. Mahaney, crossover to the foul line, met there by three black jerseys. Marshall Lonis down the lane, a foul called, shot goes up, no good. But Augustus will get to the stripe. 12.45 to play. And the third foul called on Latrell Williams. So here's Augustus to the line, and he makes his first free throw. Logan Johnson returns. Mahaney will come off. Marshallonis, one of three from the field. Nine minutes for Augustus. Second free throw on the way and good. And puts the Gales back on by 13. Dang, dang. Stefan Hall, Clay Brown, Latrell Williams, and Micah Sante for Academy of Art. Nice feed, a little high-low from the free throw line to Clay Brown, who was wide open on the right box. Easy money with a lay-in. Urban Knights hanging around here, down by 11. They've been active, they've played hard. They're determined not to make this a walk in the park for St. Mary's. Bowen is fouled. And I'll go on Asante, that is his first. 14 fouls on the Urban Knights. Jamal Fuller checks back in, and Asante will come off. Eight minutes into half number two. Saxon looking downstairs to Barrett. Another bad pass and a turnover. Clay Brown comes away with the steal. Transition defense by St. Mary's. Hall shakes Marshallonis. Can't score, but he is fouled. He will go back to the line. 11.52 to go. 
And again, the Urban Knights hanging around. They trail St. Mary's by 11 and free throws upcoming for Art U. Timing on the floor here in Moraga. We'll take the break as well. St. Mary's 55, Academy of Art 44. You're listening to Gales Basketball from Learfield. Diablo Valley Insurance Agency is a full-service independent insurance brokerage located in Walnut Creek. Founded in 1956, our agency has been providing insurance services to clients throughout Northern California and the Western United States for over 50 years. Our team of insurance professionals will take the time to understand your needs, whether personal or related to your business, and provide the best products and services for you. Go to DiabloValleyInsurance.com today to request a quote. Diablo Valley Insurance Agency, local, independent, trusted. Panini's Ristorante has been delivering quality food and beverages to the Moraga area for years and is a proud hometown partner of St. Mary's College Athletics. Casual dining with the whole family or an adult night out, they have you covered. Visit them at 1375 Moraga Way for a wonderful experience. Panini's Ristorante. Since 1990, the team at Common Interest Management has been privileged to serve boards of directors and community homeowners of many of the Bay Area's most prestigious communities. Whether working with a newly established community in the earliest stages of development or a more mature community, our experienced managers consult with the board to share best practices in all areas of community management. Common Interest tailors its services for communities of all sizes. If you are currently evaluating a new management company, please visit us at commoninterest.com. This is Joshua Jefferson. You're listening to St. Mary's Basketball. St. Mary's leads Academy of Art by 11. The Gales have never led by, as, by more than 13 in this game. 55-44 the Gale lead. And free throws upcoming for Stephon Hall. Hey, Gale fans, if you love attending live sporting events and concerts, then be sure to check out Tickets for Less. At ticketsforless.com, you'll find the best selection of tickets to all your favorite events, and you never pay steep per ticket service fees like you do on other sites. Whether you're looking to see your gales or are planning a trip to see a big event in the city, ticketsforless.com should always be your first stop for tickets. Ticketsforless.com, proud partner of St. Mary's Athletics and ticket and uh, event goers everywhere. Another missed free throw for the Urban Knights. They are now 7 of 15 from the line. Stephon Hall now 7 of 11 on the year. Make it 8 of 12 as he bounces home the second because the gale lead to 10. Johnson, Marshallonis, Barrett, Bowen, and Saxon for St. Mary's as they break the Urban Knight press, and Barrett holding the dribble at the far sideline. Gives up to LJ, and the Gales get set in the half-court offense. 55-45. Johnson with the right-hand drive. The head of steam to the rim lays it home. Nice to see the burst from LJ getting to the 10. 57-45. Johnson has nine points. Williams gets behind Saxon, lays it in. There are a lot of there are more breakdowns than we're used to seeing. Gales out ahead of the pack. Barrett loses it downstairs, and we get a foul called on Academy of Art. That's going to go on Jamal Fuller. That is his third in just four minutes. The 15 foul on the Urban Knights. 57-47. Marshallonis lob it into Saxon in the short corner. He'll hand it off back to Goose. 19 to shoot, 11 minutes to play. Another sloppy entry pass and a turnover. Yeah, it's just been too many instances just like that for the Gales. That's their 11th turnover tonight. And that's the Urban Knights' 10th steal. Hall blocked by Marshallonis. And now Marshallonis. Stripped by Dang Dang. Good read there by Dang Dang as Bowen led him right into it. And Clay Brown hits a three. And cuts the Gale lead to seven. Twelve turnovers. Seven here in the second half. Fifty-seven-fifties. A little eight to two run for the Urban Knights. Johnson, change of pace. Kick out to Barrett, corner three on the way, rattles in. And we get a whistle. And dang, dang, did he step out of bounds? He stepped inbounds before inbounding the basketball. So the Gales will get it back. Marshall Onis comes off. And Mahaney back on. 
And St. Mary's back up by 10. That was the Gales' 10th three tonight. Mahaney inbounding, and it comes to Barrett. He'll circle out, give to Johnson. So St. Mary's can now extend their lead to as many as 13. If this shot falls for Luke Barrett. Two straight threes and two triples for Barrett in a matter of nine seconds. 63 to 50. Half dozen for Luke. Brown loses it, tipped away by Mahaney. A run out for St. Mary's. It's Barrett ahead of the pack. Luke Barrett is everywhere. Two threes and a run out after the Mahaney steal and a timeout taken by the Urban Knights. Gales have their biggest lead thanks to eight straight from Luke Barrett. 9.41 to play and a 30 second timeout taken by the Urban Knights. Boy, Barrett with two corner threes. And I'll tell you what, the Gales, they, they end shoot around every day with a Luke Barrett run out dunk. That's exactly what that play looked like. The Gales will you know, obviously go through scouting after the last possession. It's a run out jam to the other side for Luke Barrett. Every single time over the last two years, carbon copy of that play right there. So Luke Barrett, he's been a spark plug for the Gales over the last 30 seconds. Piedmont's finest. And the Gales have their biggest lead now. It's at 15. Gales have hit their last four shots. They're eight of 11 here in the second half. Urban Knights now with just one timeout left. Hall met by a double team. Backs out to the corner. Dang, dang, driving inside on Barrett. Lost the dribble, out of bounds. Last touch by the Gales with 16 to shoot. And now the officials will get together and they'll turn around. So, one official overrules the other. You can hear the official on the baseline say it was his call. Gales leading by 15, they can push this with a bucket here. 9.15 to play. It's St. Mary's biggest lead. LJ, whistle, foul called on Saxon. That'll get Wessels back in. That's the fourth foul on Mitchell Saxon. 7.6 rebounds tonight for Saxon, and Wessels returns. Eighth team foul on the Gales. The second on Saxon setting a screen. Reggie Fuller. Asante off the floor right now. Here's Hall. Corner three on the way from Williams. Back rim miss. Barrett high in the air for the rebound. Inside of nine minutes to play. 15 point St. Mary's lead. They've held the uh, Urban Knights to four of 14 from the field. Mahaney change of pace to the corner for Barrett from the left side this time. That comes up short. And Williams taps the rebound out of bounds. So the Gales will keep it with 20 to shoot. 8.35 on the game clock. Johnson into Barrett. Left block. Barrett. Lost the handle and missed the shot. Brown got a hand on that. And Brown now will test the Gale transition defense and right into the body of Johnson. Will get himself to the line with 8.25 to play. This be free throws 17 and 18 for the Urban Knights. If you look at Clay Brown and Rodney Munson, I mean, these are some quick guards. Brown has some Division I experience, played in 25 games, started seven games as a freshman at St. Peter's, who, of course, the Peacocks were the talk of the town during March Madness. First 15 seed ever to advance the Elite Eight. As Brown ribs in the first free throw, Williams comes off. Asante back on. Brown's second free throw on the way, good. 65-52, St. Mary's lead is 13. 
Mahaney sprints past Dang Dang into the front court. With 8.15 to play, Gales leading by 13. Mahaney change of pace, skips it to the corner. Bowen touch pass top side to Barrett. He's open straight away. Another Luke Barrett three. He has scored the last 11 for the Gales. So a 16 point lead now for St. Mary's. This is their biggest lead and another foul called on the Gales and more Art U free throws upcoming. With the foul on Harry Wessels. And with the Gales leading by 16, 7.56 to play. We will step aside from Moraga. St. Mary's 68, Academy of Art 52. 7.56 to go on this Tuesday night at University Credit Union Pavilion. And back with more after this. You're listening to Gales Basketball from Learfield. Out here, we charge into the heartland with Mountain Dew. Out here, there's no rush hour, just the rush of flying wide open on glassy water at 5 a.m. with your first dew in hand. And there's no spin class, just bright green spinner bait that ironically matches your second dew. Out here, we don't just play big buck hunt, we hunt actual big bucks. And out here, the best road is off-road, and the color of your truck is mud. Out here, it's dew. Bay Alarm is proud to sponsor the St. Mary's Gales. How good is your defense? When it comes to protecting your home or business, Bay Alarm has been bringing the best for over 75 years. With security camera and fire alarm systems designed to fit your specific needs, expertly installed and professionally monitored 24-7. Ready to up your security game? Go to BayAlarm.com and let our team of security experts get you protected today. Go Gales! Walnut Creek offers Gales fans quick and easy access to the excitement of a vibrant city and the charm of hometown California, all in one central location, only seven miles from campus. Walnut Creek Hotels are the official lodging partners for St. Mary's. In a sunny, upscale, and comfortable environment at the base of Mount Diablo, Walnut Creek brings together an eclectic collection of culture, award-winning shopping, hotels, sports facilities, and cuisine to make you smile at every turn. Go to visitwalnutcreek.org to explore your next adventure. You're listening to St. Mary's Basketball on the Gales Radio Network. St. Mary's 68, Academy of Art 52. Welcome back to University Credit Union Pavilion. I'm Alex Jensen. Glad you're with us on this uh, Tuesday night. St. Mary's looking for its fourth consecutive win. Jamal Fuller will have two free throws here. Free throws 19 and 20 for the Urban Knights tonight. They are 10 of 18 from the stripe so far. Fuller is one of two. Joshua Jefferson back onto the floor. He replaces Harry Wessels, so a small look for the Gales again as Fuller splashes home the first free throws. The story of the last three minutes has been Luke Barrett. He had eight points in about a 30-second stretch. He's got the last 11 for the Gales. As Fuller rattles home the second. 68-54, Bowen runs the baseline and he's gonna have to call a timeout here as he couldn't find an opening. So two timeouts left for St. Mary's. Gales will not get on a plane again until January 19th. St. Mary's their next three games following this one, all in the Bay Area. Home on Saturday against Portland at 6 o'clock. LMU a week from Thursday, January 12 at 6 o'clock. And then at USF on the Hilltop on January 14th, that game at 7. And the Gales will go to Pepperdine and then come back on January 21st to host Santa Clara. The back-loaded road schedule for St. Mary's, who just played their first road game of the season on New Year's Eve. No more backcourt pressure from the Urban Knights. Luke Barrett will have to take another timeout. Back-to-back -back timeouts taken as the Gales fail to inbound the basketball. So one timeout remaining for St. Mary's. Urban Knights, by the way, are in the double bonus. Academy of Art. They are 12 of 20 from the line tonight, 8 of 12 in the second half. They're 
Mickey McConnell told me in the you know, pregame, he feels like this club has really gotten better with every game over the last. few contests. It's been up and down tonight. So Bowen will inbound here. Gets it into Johnson. Johnson trapped in the near corner. Now Mahaney stretches the pass to Barrett in the front court and the Gales will get set in the half court inside of eight minutes to play leading by 14. Mahaney with the right hand kick out Bowen. Barrett they're not going to let him get another look, open look at three. Gives it up to LJ. LJ to Barrett, and he lost the handle trying to get rid of the basketball. Bad pass, another St. Mary's turnover. Ninth turnover in the second half, and 14 for the game. Academy of Art, they, they've got 11 steals tonight. You know, the Gales take care of the basketball. They are very good. Brown has it knocked away. Good hands by LJ, and now Barrett and Brown tied up on the floor. Possession arrow favors the Urban Knights. They will keep it with 7.19 to play. And Munson will trigger. Fuller. Dang, dang. Brown and Asante also on the floor for the Urban Knights. A foul, and foul is called on the rebound on Mahaney. Got to be, I didn't see a whole lot there on the rebound, and that is number four now on Mahaney. And more free throws upcoming for Academy of Art. I'll get Augustus Marshallonis off the bench. 7.15 to go. And the free throw is good. Much like at Santa Clara, it's been a parade to the line in the second half for Academy of Art. Nine points from the line, nine points from the field as Mahaney comes off. Second free throw from Munson on the way, good. Lead official tonight, Cobayan Lopez. Trying to keep things under control after that free throw. Gale lead is a dozen. 10 of the 19 points for Academy of Art have come at the line in the second half. Johnson with 14 to shoot. Kick out to Barrett, again left wide open. Too strong on the three that time. Brown with the rebound, he wants to push. Goes cross court, deflected, not deflected, a th thrown away by Brown. And a turnover on the Urban Knights, their 12th. And the Urban Knights, they do force nearly 17 turnovers per game. Gales have turned it over 14 times tonight. Backcourt pressure here, dang. Bo Bowen gets it into Marshallonis. 6.40 to play. Marshallonis to the corner for Barrett. Run off the line, takes a drive across the paint. He goes, gets the right hand, kisses it home. Luke Barrett has the Gales last 13. It's a career high. He has 13 in the game. 70 to 66. Shot no good by Dang Dang. Bowen with the rebound. Gales will push ahead. Joshua Jefferson. Across the paint to Johnson, extra pass. Bowen, lay in low left. Good pass by Johnson, the extra pass on the interior for St. Mary's as the Gales have now opened their lead again to 16. Munson with a drive, tried to drop it off into the paint, in and out of the hands of Dang, and a foul called on Academy of Art. That's gonna go on Munson, the sixth team foul. Called on the Urban Knights. Five fifty-four to play. Gale leads sixteen. Go, 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 
Art U does not have a field goal in nearly five minutes. Nice pass, LJ to Jefferson. Jefferson turns around to the left hand, scores from the middle of the paint. First bucket for J. Jeff. Now the Gales have their biggest lead at 18. Asante met at the post by Jefferson. Turns over the left shoulder. Does it go? Bowen with the rebound. A five and change to play reach in foul there called on Munson. And that will send Marshall Onis to the line. Gales do have 17 assists. That was Johnson's sixth assist. Mahaney returns. Johnson comes off that pass across the paint to find Jefferson. So Marshall Onis to the line with 5-16 to play. Gales lead 74-56. It will be teaching points in this game, without a doubt. With 14 St. Mary's turnovers, average 11.3 as Marcellona slides the first free throw. Of course, these games are not easy to play in by any stretch. I mean, of course, Academy of Art is playing with nothing to lose tonight. Marcellona gets both free throws, 76-56. The Gales have their first 20-point lead of the night. Gales, of course, you got everything to lose when you're Division I playing a Division II. And a quality Division II at that. Brown on Marshallonis, slithers his way to the cup, scored and won. So Brown gets the bucket, he'll go to the line. That's the first field goal since the nearly the 11 minute mark for the Urban Knights. And now Marshallonis and Brown get tangled up and I believe they're both going to be called for a technical. And there was a warning issued by Coban Lopez to stop talking and it was Brown and Marshallonis had to be separated by Members of their own teams as Brown switches home the free throw, makes it a 17 point game. So now we'll go down to the other end. And no, probably will not. With the double technical, the Gales will just retain possession. Gales break the press, Bowen up the far wing, handling the dribble into the front court. St. Mary's leads by 17, just inside of five minutes to play. Been plenty of chatter here in the second half. Marshallonis weaving his way to the elbow, trying to split the defense. Foul called as Marshallonis tried to pivot his way through two black jerseys and more free throws upcoming. This will be free throws 37 and 38 tonight. As Marshallonis just made two. Now 30 seconds ago. And Marshall Onis level one and one here. That foul going on Asante, it's his second. Front end up and good for Goose. Goose is five of five from the line. And he gets them both, make it six of six. St. Mary's. Despite some other areas, that's a positive development. The Gales are 80% from the stripe tonight, 12 of 15. Here's Munson crossing over on Mahaney, trying to get inside, circles around on the baseline. It's a shovel out to Fuller. Fuller with a drive on Barrett, gets the rim, scores it, and he'll go to the line, try for a three-point play. Academy of Art, they have been aggressive. Tonight, Barrett comes off, and Chris Howell will check in. That's Barrett's second foul. 13th foul on the Gales in the second half. Fuller rims in the second free throw. 78-62, 427 to play. Marshallonis is stripped, knocked out of bounds by Munson. Bowen 
into Jefferson. Gales break the press as Jefferson advances up the near wing. And Mahaney will get the troops organized in the half court. Leading by 16. 4.15 to play. And the Gales gave up 37 in the first half. Mahaney, man goes under a screen. Three offline. And here comes Asante. Gales coming into play tonight. Gave up just under 58 points per game. That's 10th in the country. Dang Dang with 10 to shoot. Gives to Fuller. Checked by Marshallonis. Backing down. Spins baseline. Gets the rim. Lays it in. So the St. Mary's lead now 14. Marshallonis stripped. Turnover. Dang Dang. Munson run off the line, runs into traffic, offensive, no, a travel called on Munson. So he turns it over, and that will take us to our final media timeout on this Tuesday night. 3.13 to play in our ball game here in Moraga. St. Mary's leads Academy of Arts 78 to 64. Back with more after this, you're listening to Gales Basketball from Learfield. Show your school spirit and earn rewards as the official credit union of St. Mary's College University Credit Union offers a custom designed rewards credit card for the Gale family. Enjoy no annual fee while earning unlimited points, making the UCU St. Mary's credit card the perfect card to use for everyday use. Plus, when you open a UCU checking account, you'll show even more Gale pride with the St. Mary's College debit card. Visit UCU.org to learn more and apply today. Federally insured by NCUA. Fourth Moore Tap Room and Grill in Orendo's Theater Square is now your official away game watch party location for St. Mary's Athletics. Enjoy apps, salads, burgers, or one of their signature handcrafted wood-fired pizzas on the patio with the giant fire pit. Plus, they offer discounts for all St. Mary's students, coaches, faculty, and alumni. Catch every game on one of their 10 big screen TVs or enjoy live music Thursday through Saturday evenings from 6.30 to 10.30. You can even have them cater your next event. For more information, visit thefourthboard.com or call 925-254-1183. Go Gales! Bay Alarm is proud to sponsor the St. Mary's Gales. How good is your defense? When it comes to protecting your home or business, Bay Alarm has been bringing the best for over 75 years. With security camera and fire alarm systems designed to fit your specific needs, expertly installed and professionally monitored 24-7. Ready to up your security game? Go to BayAlarm.com and let our team of security experts get you protected today. Go Gales! This is Logan Johnson, and you're listening to St. Mary's Basketball. 3.13 to play in Moraga tonight. St. Mary's leads Academy of Arts 78-64. to The Urban Knights have hung around here in the second half. The Gales push their lead to as big as 20. Credit to the Urban Knights. They have not gone away. As they apply more full-court pressure here, Logan Johnson catches an outlet pass from Kyle Bowen. He's banged by Dang Dang. And St. Mary's now in the double bonus as Johnson will go to the line for two shots with 3.12 to go. The time the Gales broke the pest night, they had trouble on back-to-back -back possessions. As LJ rims out the free throw. One for three from the line tonight. Nine points, two rebounds, six assists. Second free throw is good. Johnson now to double figures. The Gales don't lose a whole lot when he does that. St. Mary's 6-1 and one when Johnson scores in double figures. He's been in single digits in four of his last five coming into play tonight. Asante trying to muscle his way downstairs. Bounces across the paint to Williams. Fuller can't handle the pass with 14 to shoot. Now he wants to go on Howell. Right-hand drive stripped by Jefferson. Gets it back and goes off the bottom of the backboard as Bowen grabs another rebound. 15 for KB tonight. That matches his career high, which was Saturday at Santa Clara. That's three straight games that Bowen has notched a career high in boards. Here's Howell with a drive, a foul called, and more free throws coming up. Yeah. 
Munson commits the personal with 2.28 to play. Chris Howell will shoot free throws. So Munson has fouled out. Nine points, four rebounds for Munson in 28 minutes. Bowen comes off and Wessels will check in. And Chris Howell will go to the line. Three for four from the stripe so far this year. Well, four or five as he rims in free throw number one. I think in a perfect world, Randy Bennett would have loved to get Chris Howell more than two minutes tonight, or at least so far. He misses the second free throw. He's going to get about four. Gale leads 16, 80 to 64. Asante on Jefferson. And the steal. J. Jeff for Mahaney up the near side. J. Jeff, or rather, on Mahaney, blocked at the rim by Fuller. Stefan Hall comes away with it, sends Asante on his way with two minutes to play. Williams from the free throw line. That's an air ball. So less than two minutes left. St. Mary's leads by 16. The Urban Knights, I think they can be proud of the way they came here and competed tonight. Howell to Jefferson. They're going to give it to him. Takes a bounce, lets it fly offline. Dang, dang with the rebound. 90 seconds to play. Back here on Saturday, 6 o'clock. Good hands by Howell. And a kickball is called. And the Urban Knights will keep it. Randy Bennett wants to know where the kick was. I can't say I blame him. Johnson comes off. Here's Asante. Hall pulls it back, open for three. Skims off the rim, Dang Dang saves it, and Luke Barrett wrestles it away from Williams, stolen again by Dang Dang. He falls over, might have got away with the travel there, ends up in the hands of Fuller. Can't score, gets his own miss, blocked by Jefferson. Mahaney ch chases down the loose ball. Gales have turned it over 17 times tonight. Howell open for three. No good. Parrott with the putback. Man, he's been all over the place here in the second half. And now a whistle, Coban Lopez. Making sure the clock is correct. Barrett has a career high 15 points. The Gales, they've also tied a season high in turnovers with 17. The uh, Urban Knights have 13 steals. Dang, dang, a step back three. That's a front rim miss. Asante grabs the long rebound and bailed out with a foul. So Asante will have two more free throws for the Urban Knights. This will be 26 free throws for the Academy of Art tonight. Asante misses free throw number one. The second half here, 30 free throws in the second half. Asante missed them both. Jefferson with the board. Still about a 13-second differential between the two clocks. Here's a lob for Wessels. Gives it back to Howell, who leans in, banks it home. And now a steal for Mahaney. He'll break the timeline. About a half-second differential between the two clocks. Gales have a 20-point lead. Mahaney looking to see if Randy Bennett wants him to shoot it or not to avoid the turnover. And it looks like the Gales will elect not the Academy of Art. They, they're all just standing around. Jefferson will take it. Off the rim, no good. Rebound Fuller, and that's the ball game. Well, again, Academy of Art, I mean, they can feel proud of what they came here and did tonight. The Urban Knights hung with the Gales the whole way. They really forced the issue. They were aggressive tonight. Got to the line 26 times. But in the end, it's St. Mary's with 84 points. The Gales shot 50% for the game and end up with their fourth 
consecutive win. 84 to 64 the final. Gales are now 13 and four overall. They conclude the non-conference portion of their schedule. And uh, St. Mary's one point away from a, a season high. They also do commit a season high with 17 turnovers, 12 of which came in the second half. And uh, for the Gales, again, consecutive win number four. St. Mary's has won seven of eight. And they will now turn their attention back to West Coast Conference play on Saturday when Portland comes to town. We'll talk about all of that and more coming up on our post-game show as St. Mary's defeats the Academy of Art Urban Knights this Tuesday evening and your final score, 84 to 64. Stick around, our post-game show is coming up next for Moraga as the Gales win their fourth consecutive game and the final score over Academy Art again, 84 to 64. Stick around, post-game show coming up next. You're listening to Gales Basketball from Learfield. Bay Alarm is proud to sponsor the St. Mary's Gales. How good is your defense? When it comes to protecting your home or business, Bay Alarm has been bringing the best for over 75 years. With security camera and fire alarm systems designed to fit your specific needs, expertly installed and professionally monitored 24-7. Ready to up your security game? Go to BayAlarm.com and let our team of security experts get you protected today. Go Gales! Hey Gales fans, if you love attending live sporting events and concerts, then be sure to check out Tickets for Less. At ticketsforless.com, you'll find the best selection of tickets to all your favorite events, and you never pay steep per-ticket service fees like you do on other sites. Whether you're looking to see your Gales or are planning a trip to see a big event in the city, ticketsforless.com should always be your first stop for tickets. Ticketsforless.com, proud partner of St. Mary's Athletics and live event goers everywhere. Since 1990, the team at Common Interest Management has been privileged to serve boards of directors and community homeowners of many of the Bay Area's most prestigious communities. Whether working with a newly established community in the earliest stages of development or a more mature community, our experienced managers consult with the board to share best practices in all areas of community management. Common Interest tailors its services for communities of all sizes. If you are currently evaluating a new management company, please visit us at commoninterest.com. You're listening to St. Mary's Basketball on the Gales Radio Network. Time now for the post-game show. Presented by Diablo Valley Insurance. A full-service independent insurance brokerage located in Walnut Creek that is owned and run by Gales. Go to DiabloValleyInsurance.com today to request a quote, a game recap, a breakdown of the box score, and more are straight ahead. Back courtside, here's Alex Jensen. And this is our Diablo Valley Insurance Agency post-game show after St. Mary's defeats Academy of Art 84 to 64, the final. The Gales are now 13 and four. It's their fourth consecutive win. St. Mary's has also won seven of the last eight. And the Gales now 13 and four overall. They're nine and two here on their home floor. Over the last 10 plus seasons, the Gales now 130 and 46 in non-conference play. And Randy Bennett picks up career win number 493 that's the seventh most among active coaches uh, in division one basketball as the gales uh, again pick up their fourth consecutive win again uh, you have to give the academy of art credit as the urban knights came in here they really pushed the gales uh, for the whole game they, the urban knights played hard and uh, in fact had the lead for the first five six minutes and what, you know, when the Gales went on a 14 to three run to turn a 15-11 deficit into a 25-18 lead, uh, the, Ur the Urban Knights never backed down as they went on an eight to two run to cut the St. Mary's lead to two and got a transition bucket in the closing seconds of the first half and uh, a bucket by Dang Dang, who by the way, Dang Dang finished tonight with four steals as did Clay Brown. Academy of Art had 13 steals. That's something for the Gales to clean up, no doubt. I'm sure Mickey McConnell will tell us that when he joins us uh, coming up shortly. That cut the St. Mary's lead to just six at the break. You don't see the Gales give up uh, 37 points and a half very often. That's what happened tonight against Academy of Art, who, keep in mind, beat UC Davis last year by 19 
on November 28th of, uh, of last season of 2021 and uh, thwarted in their in their attempt to make it two consecutive wins over uh, over Division One opponents for Academy of Art. The Gales, though, they their defense really set the tone in the second half after uh, trailing or uh, leading rather 45 to 39. St. Mary's then went on a 10 to three run to take a 55-42 lead and uh, leading 57 to 50 after a Clay Brown bucket. It was an 11-2 run by Luke Barrett. He scored 11 consecutive, in fact, 13 straight points for the Gales as part of his uh, career high 13 points for uh, for Luke Barrett. And uh, that gave the Gales a 68-52 lead, that 11-2 run. Gales then had a 10-3 run to take their first, uh, nearly take their, or to, yes, in the middle of that run, take their first 20-point lead of the game and go up 78-59 to 59 at that point. And again, uh, Academy of Art continued to play hard and credit the Urban Knights, but uh, too much St. Mary's down the stretch as uh, the Gales defeat the Urban Knights by the final of 84 to, seven, uh, to uh, 64. And again, it was the St. Mary's defense that set the tone. The Urban Knights shot exactly 40% in the second half. The Academy of Art shot 27%. The Urban Knights were 12 of 18 from the free throw line. Remember that the uh, Urban Knights made their first five. So uh, outside of that, the Academy of Art was 17 of 50 from the field after making their first five shots. That is 34%. Uh, on the game for uh, for the Urban Knights outside of the first five shots. They were four of 16 from the field. But too many free throws in this game tonight. If we're, if we're being honest, just too many free throws. In the second half, there were 30 free throws shot. For the game, uh, there were 45 free throws shot. The Urban Knights went 16 of 26 from the free throw line. The Gales went 14 of 19 from the free throw line. And, you know, you can... You know, this coaching staff will pour over the tape. There's no doubt about that. But any which way you want to go, that is too many free throws to shoot in a basketball game where the Gales are, uh, you know, maybe not disciplined enough defensively in in the instance of tonight's game or, you know, maybe uh, whatever the case may be, you allow 26 free throws in a game, you're asking for trouble. And that allowed Academy of Art to hang around in the second half tonight. As uh, in the second half, the Urban Knights – had 12 points from the free throw line and 15 from the field. A very similar margin to the one we saw on Saturday at Santa Clara. Getting to the box score now, the Gales shot 50% from the field, 29 of 58. They came one away from a season high with 12 threes. Uh, certainly a bright spot tonight, the free throw shooting for St. Mary's. They came into play tonight under 64% from the free throw line. Tonight they went 14 of 19, that is 73%. Augustus Marshallonis was 6 of 6. Uh, Aiden Mahaney was was two of two. Kyle Bowen, uh, two of three. So that is certainly a bright spot for St. Mary's, who is cert who has been struggling from the free throw line so far this year. Gales also had 11 more offensive rebounds. That is now 69 in their last five games um, for St. Mary's. They had 15 against Santa Clara. 11 more tonight. They turned that into just four second chance points, uh, but. Yeah, the Gale work on the glass has been well documented. It continued tonight. Three Gales in double figures led by Aiden Mahaney's 19 points. And uh, of Aiden's 19, 15 of them came in the first half. Mahaney was 7 of 12 from the field, 3 of 6 from the field, or 3 of 6 from uh, 3, rather, and 2 of 2 from the free throw line. And uh, Mahaney, that is his 12th consecutive game in double figures. Came into play tonight during that stretch, averaging 14.7 points per game that will of course uh, go up as Mahaney they did play with four fouls but uh, 19 points a, a game high for Aiden Mahaney Luke Barrett a career high 15 points off the bench for uh, for Luke and 13 of those came right in a row at least as far as the Gales are concerned he had an 11 to 2 run on his own two uh, three threes in that stretch and uh, and a bucket down low and then had another bucket to make it 70 to 56 before he uh, he Another two with 56 seconds left. That uh, the bucket to make it a uh, 65 to 50 was a run out and a jam, forcing an Urban Knight timeout for Luke Barrett. So a career high 50, 15 points for Barrett. He also had five rebounds, which ties a career high uh, for Luke. He was six of 10 from the field, 
three of six from three. Alex Duke is five of ten from the field, 13 points. They all came in the first half as uh, Dukas played just 17 minutes. In fact, Luke Barrett uh, with 19 minutes was on the floor for longer than Dukas. I think that's more of what Randy Bennett kind of wanted uh, out of this game. Uh, of course, didn't get it as the Urban Knights were, were game tonight, but Dukas with 13 points. Only other Gale in double figures, Logan Johnson, he had 10 to go along with six assists and a couple of rebounds. The Gales are now 7-1 and one when LJ is in double figures. Augustus Marshallon is just one of three from the field, but had eight points off the bench to go along with two assists. Did turn it over four times, and again, the turnovers are going to be a point of emphasis when we talk to Mickey McConnell, I'm sure. 17 on the night for the Gales. That ties the season high. They had 17 as well against Houston. Kyle Bowen with seven points on two of four shooting. Tied a career high, though, with 15 rebounds, three of them coming on the offensive glass uh, for KB. He had two assists as well. Mitchell Saxon, seven points and six boards tonight in 24 minutes. Three of seven uh, from the field for Saxon. He also turned it over four times. Two of those, though, were offensive fouls on uh, moving screens. Logan Johnson, by the way, a plus 22 tonight. Uh, you will take that every day of the week. Rest of the Gale scoring, Chris Howell had three points. On uh, one of one, uh, he was he made his only field goal, rather, one of two from the field, or one of two from the free throw line. No rebounds. He had a steal and uh, and no assists. And Joshua Jefferson chipped in with two points on one of four shooting, a rebound and an assist for J. Jeff in ten and a half minutes. Harry Wessels also saw the floor for eight minutes and 45 seconds, failed to score. He missed his only field goal attempt, had a rebound and an assist as well. The Gales did have 18 assists tonight, which, if I'm not mistaken, uh, is a season high. Indeed, it is a season high. They had 17 against New Mexico State and 17 against Washington. St. Mary's now 2-4 and four when committing 14 or more turnovers. Again, that had been kind of the number uh, for the Gales is uh, in their losses St. Mary's was averaging 15 and a half turnovers per game and their wins the Gales averaging 9.8 turnovers per game that number will of course go up less than 14 turnovers the Gales are 11 and 0 of course uh, St. Mary's did not meet that number tonight Gales out rebounded Academy of Art 40 to 30 15 of those coming from Kyle Bowen Mitchell Saxon had six and Luke Barrett had five Points off turnovers, St. Mary's 17 off 16 Urban Knight turnovers. And Art U with uh, 12 off of 16 St. Mary's turnovers. Gales outscored the Urban Knights in the paint 30 to 26. Second chance points, Academy of Art 5, St. Mary's 4. Fast break, uh, and again, another area where I'm sure Mickey McConnell is going to say, and of course that and the turnovers go hand in hand. Eight for Academy of Art, five for St. Mary's, and the Gales bench outscored Academy of Arts 28 to 17. Three lead changes, two ties in this ball game tonight. The Gales led for 33 minutes, and uh, Academy of Art led for six. In fact, uh, in fact tonight. Looking down the ledger for the Urban Knights, they shot 40 percent from the field, four of 16. Uh, from three, 22 of 55 from the field. They were led by 13 points from Mike Asante, who had four of eight, also had thir uh, seven rebounds, rather. Clay Brown had 12. Most of those came in the second half. In fact, uh, for Clay Brown, 10 of those, 10 of the 12 came in the se second half. Uh, Brown was, uh, was four of 10 from the field. Those are the only Urban Knights in, uh, in double figures as... Uh, Rodney Munson chipped in with nine. Jamal Fuller had eight off the bench, seven for Dang Dang, and uh, and six for Latrell Williams. As we're joined by our Diablo Valley Insurance Agency player of the game, it is Luke Barrett with a new career high, 15 points, Luke. And uh, it just looked like you gave your club some energy coming off the bench, and I'm assuming that's what you uh, you normally do. Yeah, that's what I always try to do. Um, that's that's what the, the coaches always tell me to do. The only thing you can really control is, is your energy. And we, we started off pretty slow. Um, we just weren't playing like us, so I tried to give a little bit of a spark. Um, and my coaches stick with me, so I had that opportunity. Yeah, the run out dunk you had, I was saying on the broadcast, uh, Luke, it's a, it's a carbon copy of the end of shoot arounds, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. you've, you've practiced that a couple times. Oh, yeah, for sure. How did, that, how did that tradition start? Um, I think one time 
because on the last rep of scout, we always we always do it live. And I think one time last year at the beginning of the year, we got a steal, and I kind of just ran out and felt like dunking it, um, <laughs> which was a little bit ballsy maybe because I don't know if that would be frowned upon by the coaches or anything, but uh, everybody liked it, brought some energy. So ever since then, I've been doing it. Uh, I mean, the, the Urban Knights were clearly games, and I, I think, you know, you guys knew that in the scouting report, that they were going to play hard, and they certainly did tonight. They were active in passing lanes. You, know, you mentioned the slow start for you guys, but, you know, was there an adjustment to come out or just more focus coming out in the second half because, you know, your defense certainly did what you've been doing all season long yeah, to start yeah. the second half especially. Yeah, I think we start off playing uh, not, not close to our standard on defense. Offensively, it's sometimes tough in these games to – to play as aggressive as you usually do. You might be tentative and trying to search for the best shot. Um, and then, But but the, the defense is something that we can't really let slip. And I think they made their first four shots or something like that. So, and it was just simple stuff. So it was, yeah, it was just a matter of focus, um, knowing the scout. Um, Dan Sheets did a great job giving us a scout. Uh, and then we just had to follow in the second half. Yeah, no question. What, what did you see from them in terms of, uh, you know, taking away your, your post game in half number one? I mean, you ended up with 30 points in the paint, so you, you guys certainly made a, an adjustment there. Uh, what was the change, and, and how were you guys able to execute and get some shots going to the basket? Um, we knew going in there, pretty uh, heavy converging team when you drive to the paint and when you get it in the post. So we knew it wasn't going to be easy, and they have really good active hands, and they're getting their hands on balls. We had way too many turnovers. Um, and I think just the bigs, I think especially number 22 was just, he's an undersized guy, but he was super active and, and always making, making Saxon and Wessels fight for position so they couldn't really get there. And, um, yeah, we just had to, we just had to see it. And then we came out smarter and got some layups in the second half. It seems like offensively you guys just have several ways to beat people. You showed it at Santa Clara. Uh, you know, you showed it tonight with, uh, you know, I mean, like you said, a heavy converging team, but an undersized team, and, and Mitch has just seven points. You still find a way to score 84 points. Got plenty of guys, of course, that can shoot it. You know, tell me about the depth of, of this club offensively, how, how you're able to beat teams in several different ways, and how you guys have gotten better as the year has gone along. Yeah, um, I think we've just got some guys that have turned into super consistent scorers. I think Alex uh, Dukas has became a way better player this year. He's playing pretty much the same way, but he's knocking down a ton of shots. He's playing slower, um, and he's turning into a guy that you know is going to bang a, a couple threes and get bugs for us. And then Aiden and Logan at two guard spots, um, either one of them could go for 20 any night, and they can score at three levels. So, And then we have Saxon can, Saxon can go if they can't, if we're playing against a team that's undersized or if he has a good matchup. KB can also go for 15 at any time. And then we got guys off the bench that are very capable scorers too. So it's nice to have uh, 10 guys that you can rely on. No question about it. Um, you know what, I, I lost my train of thought, Luke. I, I, I remember what I was going to ask you. Uh, you and Alex Dukas, how do you feel like you guys' skill sets kind of complement each other? You know, when you come on for him and, and, and vice versa, you guys are obviously playing the same position. How do you guys kind of complement each other when, you know, one of the other subs in for the other guy? Um. I mean, I've I've tried to pattern my game in some form after him just to do any of the things he can do because um, he's been right right in front of me in the depth chart since I got here. And um, I'm just trying to be close to as good as he is offensively and also defensively. He's an underrated defender. So I try to come in and just, like, pick up this, just pick up where he left off, guarding the, guarding the three position. Um, and maybe I can provide – a little bit more of a of a spark on the offensive glass, just because I'm playing shorter minutes, I can I can crash harder and I can just go and try to try to wear teams out, um, and then just be just be ready to shoot like he is. All right, quick break, uh, and then back to back to action again on Saturday, back to WCC play. But I'm sure uh, you know I know you guys kind of relish these days to to get some good hard practices, and I mean you guys really feel like it makes you better. For sure, yeah, I think we got. We're gonna have two two practices heading into this uh, in this game, um, just working on sharpening things up, and especially for the guys like me that don't get consistent uh, big minutes, um, it's really valuable. And yeah, just just stay fresh and be ready for Saturday.
All right, Luke Barrett, career high 15 points tonight. Tied a career high, by the way, with five boards. I know you like that as well. Yep. So uh, congrats, congrats on the win tonight, and uh, we'll see you on Saturday. Appreciate it. All right, that's Luke Barrett, your player of the game, brought to you by Diablo Valley Insurance Agency, a full-service in, uh, independent insurance brokerage located in Walnut Creek that is owned and run by Gales. Go to DiabloValleyInsurance.com today to request a quote. We'll have more coming up next. Mickey McConnell will join us. We'll get to our out-of-town scoreboard. And we'll wrap things up from Moraga as we get you ready for Saturday when Portland invades University Credit Union Pavilion. The Gales get back to West Coast Conference action coming up this weekend. Again, your final score tonight, St. Mary's 84, Academy of Arts 64. The Gales have won four in a row. They are 13-4 and four overall. And our postgame show continues next. Mickey McConnell will join us. And again, we'll wrap things up, get you ready for Saturday. You're listening to Gales Basketball from Learfield. Panini's Ristorante has been delivering quality food and beverages to the Moraga area for years and is a proud hometown partner of St. Mary's College Athletics. Casual dining with the whole family or an adult night out, they have you covered. Visit them at 1375 Moraga Way for a wonderful experience. Panini's Ristorante. Diablo Valley Insurance Agency is a full-service independent insurance brokerage located in Walnut Creek. Founded in 1956, our agency has been providing insurance services to clients throughout Northern California and the Western United States for over 50 years. Our team of insurance professionals will take the time to understand your needs, whether personal or related to your business, and provide the best products and services for you. Go to DiabloValleyInsurance.com today to request a quote. Diablo Valley Insurance Agency, local, independent, trusted. Show your school spirit and earn rewards. As the official credit union of St. Mary's College, University Credit Union offers a custom-designed rewards credit card for the Gale family. Enjoy no annual fee while earning unlimited points, making the UCU St. Mary's credit card the perfect card to use for everyday use. Plus, when you open a UCU checking account, you'll show even more Gale pride with the St. Mary's College debit card. Visit ucu.org to learn more and apply today. Federally insured by NCUA. This is Randy Bennett. You're listening to St. Mary's Basketball. Alex Jensen back with you in Moraga as we wrap things up uh, from University Credit Union Pavilion. St. Mary's over Academy of Art tonight, 84-64. to 64. Not always the most fun game to watch uh, tonight, but uh, the Gales find a way to get it done. A lot of free throws, uh, 45 total free throws shot tonight between these two teams. The Urban Knights were uh, 16 of 26. The Gales uh, were 14 of 19 on the night, but... Most important thing, St. Mary's gets the win. Their fourth consecutive, they are 13 and four. And as you heard from Luke Barrett, we'll get some time to uh, shore some things up and uh, you know, come back strong against Portland as they return to West Coast Conference play. Speaking of WCC play, let's take a quick look at the out of town scoreboard brought to you by Visit Walnut Creek. And uh, this was the only WCC team in action tonight. So we'll go back to Saturday and take a look at the results of Saturday's games. And a surprising result in Stockton, really, with Pacific taking down LMU. LMU now 11-5, and five, and the Lions, they have wins over Wake Forest and Georgetown this season. They fall to the Tigers at the Spanos Center as uh, Pacific improves to 8-9, and 1-1 one and one in WCC play. Nick Blake had 23 points in that game for Pacific as... Um, the, uh, the Tigers, even with Loyola Marymount at 1-1 one one in league play. Gonzaga in Spokane scored 111 points in a win over Pepperdine. 111-88 to was the final. As Gonzaga improves to 12-3 on the year, they are 1-0 in WCC play. Pepperdine now 7-8, 0-1 in the league as uh, the Waves got 20 for Maxwell Lewis. Keep an eye on that name. Just uh, filed that name away, Maxwell Lewis. Again, he had, uh, you know, really, uh, the rumor was that he, he tested the NBA draft waters out of high school and elected to go to Pepperdine, but really good player, uh, a 6 7 wing, and again, legitimate a NBA aspirations as uh, Maxwell Lewis goes for 20. You know the name Drew Timmy, of course, 35 points and 10 rebounds for Timmy. He continues to put together a profile. 
uh, that could be looked at as uh, a national, forget conference, national player of the year uh, type of profile. On the hilltop, a surprising result on Saturday. San Diego bounces back from a 27-point loss in this building on Thursday and beats San Francisco 80-68. to Toreros overcame a 15-point deficit in the first half, scored 48 second-half points, got 23 points, seven boards from Marcellus Erlington, a career-high 23 points from Wayne McKinney the third as well as the Toreros improved to 8-8 eight and 1-1 eight and one and one in WCC play. And San Francisco, again, uh, falling by 12 at Santa Clara. They fall by 12 at home to San Diego. They are 0-2 in league play and 11-6 and overall. Their net ranking fell to, I believe it was 119. The, uh, the Dons were in the top 100. And again, they fall to 119 after the loss to San Diego uh, on Saturday night. Khalil Shabazz with 21 points and eight rebounds in the loss. BYU defeats Portland 71 to 58 at the Marriott Center. Gideon George 20 points and nine rebounds in that game. Christian Sholin for the Pilots, who are now eight and nine and 0 and two in West Coast Conference play. 32 points, six rebounds for Sholin. And uh, the Pilots, man, I, you go back to early in this season, and uh, the Pilots they really took North Carolina to overtime, uh, and they beat Villanova. But it's been a, a slow go for the Pilots of late. They've lost four in a row, and. Uh, Five out of six, and Portland will uh, will come here to Moraga with an eight and nine record, 0 and two in West Coast Conference play. And we are now joined by Mickey McConnell. And uh, you know, Mick, I, I, you know, wasn't always the most fun game for me to call over here. I'm sure it wasn't the most fun game for you to watch. But uh, you know, the most important thing, your guys got out of there with the win, and your defense really took control of the game again in the second half. Yeah, we um, offensively early on, I thought we did a pretty nice job. We hung on to the ball in the first half and then yeah defensively we got off to a, a slow start um unusually slow but i thought i mean second half they was they were really good on d and then um offensively we turned it over a ton in that second half i think 12 turnovers in the second half so um something we knew that they could do going in i think they forced something like that they play the ball hard but almost 17 turnovers yeah, game they forced, yeah. but we yeah we i thought we were a little bit careless um at times in that second half um and kind of took us out of rhythm and instead of just attacking we we made some careless turnovers um and kind of let them hang around a little bit but you know overall i thought pretty good job offensively minus the turnovers defensively the second half or that group was really good i'm gonna be honest with you mick when you told me during our pregame interview today that you're gonna have your hands full i'm thinking yeah, yeah okay but credit where credit's due i mean uh you know the urban knights w we knew they would play hard based on uh based on scout today I mean, you're right. There were some there were some careless turnovers, and you know better than me. But some of that as well with good hands by Academy. I mean, they played well. Yeah, they did. They did, and that's how they play. They play the ball hard. Um, we had a, you know, we had probably four or five rebounds that we got, but they just poked away, took them out, took it out of our hands, and then, um, I mean, they did a good job. They they turned us over in that second half. Um, but yeah, they they play hard. That's a good team. There, there's a reason why they won their league last year, and they're yep. nine and four this year. Um, they're you know well coached. They they do a nice job. They started off the game played well. They had a good plan, and luckily we were able to kind of lock in in the second half defensively. But um, credit to them, they they played well. What was Luke Barrett's impact tonight? He was huge for us. He you know we we were playing pretty well offensively, but then we he kind of broke it open for us. You know, obviously the three threes, but he was he was good. He he got a penetration layup he just kind of let the game come to him and i mean 15 and, and six and almost 20 minutes is a, is a good night he gave us a huge spark off the bench uh you know it seems like the last few games teams have been kind of guarding the post a little bit differently with you guys and really i guess over since mitch got off to the the blazing hot start uh you know it, it just seems like there's been some unconventional post defense if you will there hasn't been as many clean looks for mitch on the post ups as you know maybe we saw last year with with Matthias Toss, uh, but it, it, it seems like you guys have an answer just about every time. Uh, how much of a credit is that to kind of the different ways that your offense can beat people in the personnel that you have? Yeah, he's, I mean, he's going to be a big factor. You look at his numbers, he, he has the ability to um, put points in the paint up, and he's done that this whole year. So um, we have a pretty versatile group. You know, we have guys that can play in the pick and roll. Um, you know, your three guards, especially Logan, Aiden, Augustus all kind of give you a different yeah. look individually. So 
Um, those three can really attack in the on ball. And then obviously Dukas, Dukas was good early. He uh, he did a good job. You know, he got some shots. He <laughs> scored on an OB play. But there, we have a variety of ways that, you know, we have guys that can score and, and um, get buckets a little bit. And then, you know, Saxon, he's pretty good at taking what they give him. You know, I thought he'd, I wish he was a little bit more aggressive tonight. But he kicked out. He got an assist, a um, couple assists. He hit Logan for a three early on. So he didn't force it too much. And it's just kind of how it, it's going to be some nights. You know, they, they tried to front. They tried to really keep it out of his hands. And we got some penetration layups because of it. Uh, he picked up right where you left off again on the glass as well. 11 more offensive rebounds. I know you'd like to see the second chance points uh, up a little bit higher than four off 11 offensive rebounds. But uh, you guys are still playing really hard. and They're in the right position at the right time underneath. I mean, they've kind of just kept that consistent effort going. Yeah. I mean, Bowen again on the boards, 15 boards again is it's a, it's a big time night um but yeah Saxon luke um harry got uh on the go offensive glass and that it's a, one of our strengths you know obviously yep. we gave them a few more than we would have liked but i thought we did get a, did a good job we were getting some good looks and got some layups that didn't fall and luckily our guys crashed hard and they were in the right spot so th those points are are valuable you know getting a second shot getting a third shot um we saw it last game against santa clara you know it can keep possessions going where if you go one and out then you know it, the score could be a little different no question okay so now uh now a few days before portland and we, we talk about every time make it seems like you have a few days some some practice time to help you guys get better yeah we'll have a you know we'll have a chance to have a good practice um coming up and you know obviously it's that's why you play this game you know there's things to clean up you don't want to get you know complacent um you've won a couple in a row so it, it's good for us. We got tested tonight. Um, some things that we obviously need to clean up, taking care of the ball and stuff like that. But, yeah, we'll have a chance to have a good practice, um, get our guys some rest, and um, get ready for Portland. Yeah, well, we'll see you on Saturday. Mick, congrats on the win. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right, that's Mickey McConnell uh, with your post-game coaches. Show up to the Gales, uh, pick up their fourth consecutive win, defeating Academy of Art 84-64. to St. Mary's now 13-4. And uh, they will pick up West Coast Conference play again on Saturday. Let's take one quick look at the West Coast Conference standings after that West Coast Conference scoreboard and get you ready for uh, for Saturday. St. Mary's BYU both 2-0. Gonzaga is 1-0. Santa Clara, LMU, San Diego, and Pacific all 1-1 with Pepperdine at 0-1. USF and Portland at 0-1. And two coming up on Thursday before the Gales return to action on Saturday. Santa Clara at Pepperdine, Pacific at San Diego, Gonzaga at USF, and LMU hosts BYU. Well, it wasn't again. It wasn't always fun to watch tonight. Uh, it wasn't always. I, I guess a better way to put it would be it wasn't always a work of art tonight uh, for the Gales. But St. Mary's does the most important thing. They get the win. 84 to 64 over Academy of Art. The Gales will host Portland on Saturday. That'll be all in our next broadcast, 6 o'clock first tip, or opening tip, rather, so a 5.45 pregame. Tickets are still available. You can, you can purchase those tickets at smcgales.com. We'd love to see you out here. Been great crowds all year. Coming into play tonight, uh, St. Mary's is averaging over 3,000 per game. And, uh, again, would love to see you out at the building uh, as uh, St. Mary's takes on Portland, continuing WCC play and looking for their first 3-0 and start in four seasons. My thanks to Mickey McConnell, Chris Howell for joining me during the uh, broadcast tonight, Emily Smith, her entire crew upstairs uh, for bringing you this ball game. And again, we'll talk to you on Saturday, 545 pregame, 6 o'clock tip. St. Mary's hosting the Portland Pilots right here at University Credit Union Pavilion looking for its fifth consecutive win. So for Mickey and Chris and Emily, Alex Jensen saying so long on this Tuesday from Baraga. And one more, once more, your final score, St. Mary's 84 and Academy of Arts 64. You've been listening to live play-by-play -play coverage of St. Mary's basketball on the Gales Radio Network. Tonight's game has been brought to you by Pepsi. Delicious, refreshing Pepsi by Under Armour. We'll keep building the gear. You'll keep getting better. And by Diablo Valley Insurance, owned and run by Gales. Go to DiabloValleyInsurance.com today to request a quote. The proceeding has been a Learfield presentation of the Gales Radio Network.